the holiday some time to come here because it wasn't available to that company in Texas. Mm -hmm. So I started coming here, and as my mother said before she passed away, once over, never back. You know, I saw the ocean, and that was it. I was done. <laughs> So my five-year plan turned into, this is my 30th year, yeah, about my 30th year. And, um, and so then I was single. My kids at that point were in high school and college, and my mom was living with me. My dad had passed away. And so um, I just kind of made a plan to, to become a millionaire and to become a Californian and one of the South. And then I, I met a guy who was from Louisiana raised his family in Texas and he was here working for a house and I had opened an apartment locating company here at the same time because they didn't exist and if you're from the south you know where those are so we helped him find a place to live and then he and I started dating and then 14 years later we got married because I have commitment issues <laughs> <laughs> and um this is really important yeah <laughs> uh, and then uh, so now we've been married 12 years and, and happily ever after we have a nuclear family that merged well and all our kids are musicians and and teachers, and it's like they've known each other all their life, so it's all good. Cool. So that's how I got here, because when, when at the point that he and I met, I was still working for um, a commercial real estate firm in uh, Los Angeles, but my and my office was in Century City at the 20th floor of the Watch Tower, and my territory was from Oxnard to Tehachapi, if any of you really know what that is. Oxnard to Tehachapi, and then down to like the Hennett Victorville area, across North Orange County and up the coast. So I managed 15,000 units, 220 employees. And those 220 on site employees had five supervisors that they reported to, the five supervisors reported to me. My job was to manage the client, make sure they got their quarterly reports on time, and then help them decide if they were going to buy, sell, or hold um, of their properties and annually. And some of those owners are institutions. Like uh, credit, they manage credit units. Henderson Global is, is is in Connecticut. They manage pension funds for people, and so they put that money into um, into stock market and into bonds and into real estate, and they move the money around depending on where the yields are. And then my smallest client was a doctor retired who lived in Venice Beach, and he had a 220 unit property in Pomona. So I was traveling a lot. It was a busy, hectic schedule. And um, and I decided to kind of downsize my business and and take on some residential business because I was getting those referrals and that's how I came to KW and I've been here ever since. Uh, because my sister who built businesses, she was not a realtor at the time, but became one said she she was a graduate of the University of Texas and she said they have the best profit share plan and culture because she studied business models to bring to the companies that she worked with. So here I am. Uh, when I came to KW uh, 17 years ago, we were in Redonda Beach, and that office merged with this office, and I started building a team, and so now my team does commercial residential property management. We belong to KW Commercial, we belong to the Luxury Asian Division, we belong to Sports and Entertainment Division, and we belong to Keller Williams Relocation Division. So as Bob Willacka alluded to, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, but but I love to learn and I'm still learning and I love KW culture. So now we can move on to this. We're going to talk about sellers today because I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see this. I can see here, but I can't see them. So um, winning with sellers is basically what we do. We we organically when you do that, you end up working with some buyers because you don't want to let them go. The more, and that was you know Roger Staubach. Uh, if you're not from Dallas and you're younger than 50, you might not know who that is. But Roger Staubach was a quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys, and he worked for the same firm that I worked for. So we get to see him and Danny White in the summertime. And when he retired from the Cowboys, he started the Staubach Company, which specialized in commercial real estate. And in those days, no one represented the consumer that wanted to buy or rent a commercial property. All the commercial guys, and I say guys because they all were, um, all, the, all the commercial people represented the owners of the properties, whether they were buying, selling, or renting, and then they would do the tenant rep, you know, on the side. There really wasn't anybody that specialized in tenant rep. And that's how Roger really built his company. When he started Stalbock and Company, they were tenant reps, and he really only worked with the guys. His One of his first clients, I remember, we worked with was Lowe's. The was on the East Coast and they're moving through Texas and out this way. And they were looking for big box and shopping centers and stuff. But he represented them as the tenant 
to find them the properties to buy or to lease. And through that, he got into relationships with guys who own the property, who sometimes didn't like their listing agent. And when those, and if especially if his client, like Lowe's, bought a property, wanted to sell it, he'd come back to the project. So residential real estate used to be that way. So we only worked with sellers. We don't worry about buyers. And then we started increasing our commissions so that the buyers got a share of the commission. But all commission, as you know, comes to our broker. But we started increasing our commissions so that Buyers could have their own agent represent them and not have dual agency. A lot of states are getting away from that. Texas still has it. Tennessee still has it. Oh, and I have a team in Tennessee. I still have a team in Nashville. I forgot about it. Um, <laughs> not really. So anyway, um, uh, there are a couple of lawsuits I won't go into right now, but there are a couple of lawsuits in a couple of states, Missouri and Illinois, where they want to take that away and not pay buyers agents part of the commission anymore. Um, but we'll see how that goes. It's a, it's a lawsuit between those two states and NAR with the um, uh, quick cooperation things. We'll see how that goes. Anyway, back to Ignite. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to ask you guys about your last session. Um, what was your last session about? When the, the, when the buyer. Later. When the buyer. Okay. So I was supposed to ask you something about accountability, but I have, I don't, I have to find my notes. Um, Let's start here. So, so we're going to start with uh, finding A sellers and A, what we call a, a class A seller. I, I don't really like to discriminate along those lines, but there are sellers who are more ready, willing, and able, just like the buyers. They're more ready, willing, and able to, to engage in the contract with you right now. And then there's others that are three or six or nine months out. And, and what I want to say to you is that when I first started at KW, and I didn't know a lot about residential real estate, but I was in business development on the commercial side, and I knew a lot about people. One of the instructors said, I was in a room like this with a bunch of people, and Ignite back then was called 446, more than six, four sales, and 443, four than six, four sales in three months. Uh, but it has improved and grown into what is Ignite. But the instructor there at that time said, if you're working with a seller and they and you go to talk to them about listing their home and then they can't make a decision and then they want you to come back and then they're talking to other agents and then and he said just like working with a buyer you show them three properties like two weekends in a row you show them six properties and they don't make a decision then move on right mm -hmm. and i'm like what the bullshit is that and i don't get that but i came from a very structured commercial background where we had our pipeline and we had our people that we were always following up with because in Dallas, when I was trained, the motto was you stay with them till they buy or till they die. So I liked that better. And it's all about building relationships because winning with sellers, just like winning with buyers, is we don't we don't really sell real estate. We we get into relationships with people to help educate them and facilitate and guide them through the transaction. The real estate is going to sell itself. And, and if, if you show a buyer three homes and they don't buy. It's not your fault, it's not their fault, it's just the wrong house. You may have to show them 20 properties, but that's what we do, that's what we're here for. And, and I just believe in building the relationships and building the pipeline and staying in touch with that pipeline. Command has a beautiful system for that, that, that our uh, assistant on our team facilitates for us. And we send out, uh, we touch everybody in, in command in our database 36 times a year, three times a month. They get our newsletter, they get a holiday greeting because there's always some kind of holiday in one month, and then they get the market update. That's what she does for us on a regular basis through command. And then we do our own three touches through phone calls or texts and stuff to, to our, our sphere. Because to, to win sellers, they have to know, like, and trust you, and they have to know that you're active in the market, and they have to know that you know what you're doing, and, they, and you have to be front of mind with them. Because they see so many things right now, and especially on that, HGTV channel or whatever. Yes. yes. To work with a listing agent, you know, work with a listing agent. You'll get a better deal. Well, that's BS too. The listing agents just keep both sides of themselves. So, mm -hmm. uh, so, so the A sellers are the ones that are, are ready to to go now. Just like and 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 most importantly, I want you guys to like have this wonderful mindset and not listen to all the chatter going on out there about how horrible the market is. The market has shifted. The market has changed. The market is different. How many of you are like new to the business, like like within the last year? Okay, and then if we so so the, the market 
46 years, I've seen a lot of change in the markets. And then it changes back the other way, you know. And even this morning, I was on a call with, with some people in Phoenix and across the United States. And, and it was like, buyers are picking up. Buyers are coming back. And interest rates are going down a little bit. And that's giving them some peace of mind because they think they missed the boat on the interest rates. And, and now they see them come down a little bit. They're not waiting for them to go down into the threes again. They're like, oh, they're going down. Let's move, right? So I, t I we have a listing. Uh, we have several. Thank you, God, keep them coming. But one that we took last week on uh, Saturday, it was an expired listing. Yeah, the homeowners had it listed before. It was expired. They called us. We went and talked to them. They were ready. They were ready, willing, and able to move. They had already had their home listed for sale. It was overpriced. The agent didn't know what she was doing. There were 96 pictures of the property, 96 Whoa, wow. pictures in, in the list, and they were all duplicates, like the living room. There were four pictures, same, the same picture. Oh my God. Not four pictures of the living room from different angles. Four, mm -hmm. four, she didn't know how to load her stuff up, and it wasn't yeah. professional photography, and, and, and she had two showings in three months or something. So we got realistic with them about price. We got realistic with them about service. And, and we promised to help them find a house near their granddaughter at West Hills, right? So they listed with us on, on what, a, a week ago, not this past weekend, but the weekend before, we got photos taken on Tuesday and we went live in the MLS. I had, I had 10 appointments to show on Saturday. And while I was there Saturday, I had three more people call for appointments. So I had 13 appointments to show it on Saturday. And, and Sunday, I had three offers and made an appointment to go see the sellers on Monday because they were out on Saturday with the buyer agents on our team looking at properties in West Hills. So I made an appointment to sit down with them on Monday of this week to review the offers. And on my way there, this young lady called me and said, I just saw this. I've been looking for a house right in that neighborhood. And, um, and it's just, I'm a CPA, single mom with a seven-year-old. And my mother was with us and, and is kind of the caregiver for my son and gets into school and stuff. This is the perfect house for us, the perfect price range. I'm free proof. She was ready, willing, and able buyer. Mm -hmm. And I had a ready, willing, and able seller. And the ready, willing, and able buyer. Agents. No. So I'm like, Thanks. let me see if I can get you in. I'm going to be there. They didn't want to show it anymore. They've got three offers. And she said, write an offer, write me an offer for, for the, the list price. And I said, okay. And I said, but I'd rather you see it, right? Let me see if I can get you in. <laughs> and so, and I said, because two of the offers I have are above list. Not a lot, a couple thousand dollars. I can't tell you where, but they're above list. And the biggest thing is this is an elderly couple with their only son, has their only granddaughter who's about to turn one year old and they're tired of driving to West Hills and then they're moving. Right. So they're ready to go, but they need three weeks in the house after escrow closes to get there. And I know I'm not following this exactly, but that's how I did rest. So, okay. um, so I got permission to show her, I got permission to go 45 minutes early. So the sellers were there because they were waiting for us to show up and present the offers. I had the offer for her to sign. She and her mom walked through the house and she walks, she's like, can we go outside and talk about this a little bit? And I said, yeah, well, I need you to sign this. And she's like, I'd rather not die to do a doggy sign. So in about four minutes, I got a text from her and said, can you come out? And I said, yes. And she said, if I offer $6,000 more than less, will I be in the first place? And I said, yes. And so we changed the price on there and she initialed it. And I went back in and presented four offers. And the seller accepted hers and then another one that was halfway there. Uh, as a backup, mm -hmm. so so that's the ready, willing, and able, right? They they you don't need to force them, you don't need to coerce them, and you never should anyway. Everybody's going to move mm -hmm. at their own time, and 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 in one of the um, in, in one of the classes that I teach at the Association of Realtors, because I I'm a past president over there, I was on the board of directors over there for about twelve years, and on grievance committee for twelve years, so we can touch. Oh, I forgot. Okay, so so um. Uh, I teach a class over there where I, I it's new agents, brand new agents who are just licensed and, and sometimes are with firms that don't have all the training that they have. And um, and I tell them that each transaction, this is how you win with sellers. And, and we can just stop now and go home if you'll take this in your head. <laughs> each transaction is a transition. <laughs> 
not for you. You know it. You know it like your dentist knows dental work, and you know it like your hairdresser knows hair, and your mechanic knows your car. We know the transaction, but we sometimes forget or lose sight of the fact that it's a transition. This couple that I was just talking about that want to move to be near their granddaughter loved their house. They were transferred here from Pennsylvania. He worked for Sketchers. He's a civil engineer. He's retired. And part-time he works now for the, the BLM, which is the Bureau of Land Management. It's a federal job. And, and they want to take their house and move it up there and put it on a lot there. They love their home. This is a big transition for them as much as they want to be with their granddaughter. So um, you can always remember that. And, and we kind of have it on our client sheets that every transaction is a transition. And that's our job. Our job is to facilitate a transition to know what their big why is and to make this not stressful for them. So I forgot to give these to you because it's something I always do because I talk too much. What I want to do in the first five minutes is um, as you guys pick a partner and figure out what you want to learn from today. And uh, we don't have enough that. <laughs> and it's better to, sometimes we don't always care. We don't always care what we want to learn with uh, people that we've just met or barely know. And so if you can write on there, and you have questions, <laughs> sorry. Uh, no, Suzette, I think Bob is using a desk. <laughs> Thank you. So if you have questions or something for Zach, um, just write it on that on that index card I gave you. And then uh and then we can just write it on the index card and then we can uh talk about it in a, in a little bit with that question. So First of all, think about what it is you want to learn from today, why you came here, aside from the fact that you're in the so that you it would help you make a lot of money. Um, there, there are, I know there's something that you wanted to get on how to win the sellers. And my best piece of advice to you on that is that uh, it's, it's about the transition and not the transition. The money flows where your energy goes. And if you put your energy into making a smooth and seamless transaction for them, then, then you'll be, you'll, You'll have abundance, like you have no idea, and and that brings referrals, and referrals make your job a lot easier. The um so with the A sellers, and you're talking to them, and you find out what what the what their transition is. Like that was the first thing we keyed into with that couple is they wanted to get to West Hills, right? So we we then I'm like, well, let's come by and talk to you for a minute, and sometimes if anybody in here has heard of 72 Solar Works with that program, mm -hmm. you know, that they, they're they like, what's the price? What's the starting price? What's the price? I want to know what the price is. And I have two right now that I'm working with, and they just want to know what the price is. One of them is already listed in Palos Verdes, but he wants to know what our price would be. And I'm like, I, I really would like 15 minutes just to come see your house, right? Because, because I, I have... We don't make it about us, and I'll get to that when we get to the pre-listing packet, which is almost next, um, is that there are things in the house that we can't see. And you can, you can sit online and do all the research. You can pull the, the, the uh, market analysis. You can pull the uh, realtor property, the RPR, and, and you can look at what's currently for sale by owner. You can collect all the data and figure out very quickly, and, and in California, it's different than like in Texas or Tennessee, they use a square foot price there. It's hard for us to do that in our neighborhoods here, because there's a 1200 square foot house that is uh, built in 1930, and then, you know, there's a 1200 square foot townhouse that was built two years ago. Price per square foot doesn't work here, or that, and they're right next door to each other, and one's a tear down and one's new construction. It just doesn't work here, where the neighborhood, most of the neighborhoods, Unless you get into the heart of the old downtown areas of those cities, most of the neighborhoods are pretty cookie cutter, and the floor plans usually have the same kind of square footage and stuff. So, so our job is to get the appointment because it's about them. Like I, I just want 15 minutes to see your house because there's benefits, features, upgrades, and and renovations maybe that we can't see, and that would add value to any price that I would give you that I've researched online. That's that's. That wins us more appointments than anything because it truly is about them and helping them get to the next step 
of, of what they want to know. They need more information. And our job is to educate and give them all the information that they need to make the right decision. So we are not salesy. We do not talk about how wonderful we are, uh, even though it's hard for us not to, but but we don't. Uh, we, we, we truly, what makes us so wonderful is that we really do find out what their need is and how we can facilitate that transaction <clears throat> as smoothly and as seamlessly as possible. So the next thing on our list here is the pre-listing packet. I'm going to I'm going to talk about this for a second because the pre-listing packet and and oh they don't have it up here. Okay, so they there's also a, a, a thing about bringing your, your listing package to your to the listing appointment. We don't do that. We we have a listing presentation about who we are, what we do, how we do it, testimonials. We have all of that. And it's all printed and it's in the hardbound book that we buy from Holland. Um, we have all of that that is our commercial. And it's the reason that they called us or the reason that they were referred to us or the reason that we've been here for 18 years at Keller Williams. All of that's in our pre-listing packet. That's all of our glory. That's our red show, everything about us. And that's where we stop talking about us. And we try to take that book ahead of time. It's, yeah. And when you say... Um, your book, your it, but then you mentioned so is that Keller Williams or is that your team? Ours is our team. We okay. started with a, we started with a one in command, okay, which is great listening presentation. There's a couple of templates in there uh, that you can use, and, and, and it has pages where you can give your testimonials. Testimonials don't have to be from somebody that you bought or sold the house from. <laughs> testimonials can be from your child rep. Joy and Ellen or whoever, she's one that's around all the time. But you know, a testimonial can be from your title rep that how wonderful you are to work with and what a great personality and business history you have. Testimonial could be from Chris Sub, who does all of our transaction coordination, right? So you have a team already. And and you don't and and there's a friend of mine named Sako who is uh, an agent in this office, and you'll only see him once a year at the awards lunch because Sako is just Sako. He's out there doing his thing and doesn't come to the office much, and he's great. And there's a guy I'll never forget. Sako had there's a house uh, at the time. It was about ten years ago. There's a house, two million dollar house in Manhattan Beach. Sako plays poker there every Friday night. He's played poker there every Friday night. He's a bachelor, um, retired, sold his auto mechanic shop, and came into real estate. Great guy. He's played poker with this group of guys every Friday night for like four years. And one night he's over there, and Sako's mom is Armenian and a great cook, and she always makes treats for this poker party. So he's over there with getting the food set up with his buddy, and his buddy was talking about selling his house and how he had talked to Raju before Raju got sick. But he had talked to Raju, and Sako said, Why would you talk to Raju? I'm here every Friday night. I've never seen Raju here. I've been here every Friday night for the last four years. He said, Well, that's what I bought the house from. You know, he has a big team. And that's who I bought the house from. So that's who I called. And Sako said, when you hire Raju anymore, you don't get Raju. You get his team. And you don't even know those guys. When you hire me, you get me. And I'll be here. I live nearby. I live in North Redondo. You'll get me. I will be here for every show. And I will be here. You don't have to deal with a team. You have me. And I know your house, right? So the guy hired him for that reason. So, so everybody, all of us are very employable because everybody wants something different in an agent. And some people want a team and some people want a single agent. But your testimonials come from the people that you know. And, and that could be in other businesses that you've been in where you've had successes with stuff too. So, so have, and you don't need a lot, you know, too much is too much is too much. They just want to hit the high points with that. So our pre-listing packet, we have developed over well, especially the last 12 years, we kind of tweaked it. And so it's very specific to, because we do commercial, so we have a section for the commercial, we have a section for the residential, we have a section about property management, all of that stuff is in there. Um, and, and it is a little bit too much. <laughs> so we've been looking at cutting that down a little bit. But, but everyone says also have your book that you take on your listing presentation when you go, right? We don't. We don't do that. We This is our commercial. We send it to them early. Sometimes they want it electronically. I will always, along with the electronics, send them the hard copy because they can hand that to somebody very easily and say, look what these guys do, right? But at that point, 
We don't talk about us anymore. We go on the listing appointment. We take the listing agreement with us. I don't fill in the price. I fill in the ordinary specifics, you know, 30 days, you know, uh, right now we're doing 90 day. We're doing 90 day listings and we don't fill in the price. We fill in the time and we fill in a 6% commission and we fill in the um, who's going to be titled and who's going to, but all those things are subject to change, right? But we go ahead and fill it in because nine times out of 10, eight times out of 10, eight times out of 10, they're probably not going to sign the listing agreement that day with you, right? And, and as good as we are, we book appointments, first appointments with 50% of the people we talk to who are really interested in selling their house. We get appointments with half those people. And then the other half, we touch with newsletters and emails, and we also look for new things that come up in their neighborhood to keep them informed, all of that stuff. And then probably half of those eventually list with us. So there's, we probably nail like 75% of them. And, and of the 25% we don't get, some of those really never really wanted to sell anyway. They were just curious. So, um, um, wow, what was I saying? So, so we go, let's back up. So we'll go to the listing appointment and, and we want to know why they're moving, what their time frame is. First of all, we want to walk through the house with them. Because this is phase two. Phase one of winning the sellers, let them know that we're there to help with their transition and that we will make it as smooth and as seamless as possible. The second phase of winning with the seller is getting them to know, like, and trust you. And that's what happens when you're on the appointment. We always take a gift. If it's during the holidays, we'll take a poinsettia plant or a candle. If it's during the spring, we'll take shamrocks or a plant or something. If it's in wintertime, we take, you know, goodies or candy. We always bring a gift with us and thank them for allowing us into their house. And then, and then we find out more about their transition, more about what would work for you, ideally. You're going to sell your house. We want to do it your way, what you need. And that's when the couple said to us, we need 30 days to move. And I don't want to pay rent back. I want, I want to stay in the house 30 days. I need the money from the close of the escrow to help fund the close of the escrow in my new house. And, and we're older and it's going to take us some time, even though they're half packed. Um, that means that we're going to have to get everything else packed and hire a mover. And just for the peace of mind, I would like, you know, he said a couple of weeks. I said, we can get you, we can get you 29 days because. <clears throat> Despite the chatter that's going on out there, there are still multiple buyers in the marketplace, especially if you're priced right. And so if that's the thing and, and you're not intent on getting 20 or 25,000 more than what you've had the house listed for, even though we will try to get you that because more money you make, the more money we make. But if your real thing is to get the 30 days, we can find somebody who'll give you 30 days to move out and not charging the rent back. Okay, so that's phase two of winning with the seller is on the listing appointment getting them to know, like, and trust you because you honestly, authentically are making notes about what is best for you. Is it the money? Is it the time? Is it the repairs? You know, there's a lot of, there are, especially in South Bay, a lot of elderly people who've been in their homes a long, long time and there's deferred maintenance, but they don't care. They love their mm -hmm. property and maybe, you know, when they when they bought their house in Palace Brady's for $97,000, 42 years ago, which my parents didn't do, and moved to Texas, which still pisses me off. <laughs> um, they spent the same amount of money for the house in Texas, but it's not worth a million and five now. Um, the, the, those people that paid that money for that house have been there 40 or 50 or 60 years, and their income hasn't changed as much as the expenses. It's like the rent control situation of Santa Monica. So a lot of the deferred maintenance is because they just didn't have the money. You know, they're paying off if they can't student loans or they're, they're living on retirement. They just don't have the money. So it, it's the education that you have about knowing that the three cops that you hold in their neighborhood were recently remodeled or renovated like two or three years ago, or four years ago, and there isn't. There are still a lot of original homes that we see from time to time. There may be some mildew. We don't use the other M word, <laughs> um, but but there may you know there's issues that need to be cured and remedied, and and most especially the health and safety issues. 
So when, when you come from that place of what, you know, what they call, if you've taken, when you take both, you'll learn they call it coming from contribution, which is part of the women's culture. We're not there to sell ourselves. We're there to find out what they really need and explain to them how we can get it for them so that they have peace of mind. The, 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 the one thing most important to me with that is the people that are in default, and we're seeing more of those come up there in default with their mortgage and maybe facing foreclosure. In 2006, seven, eight, that was 80% of our business was working with REOs, the real estate owned by the banks that had foreclosed, and the uh, notices of default because they couldn't make any money then. They they had those were short sales. They had to get they they owed more on the house than it was worth. I don't think we'll ever see that happen again, but it did. And we had to get permission from their lenders to sell it for that. So, and, and we had we had twenty to fourteen of our listings every month were either REOs or notices of default. The REOs come from the bank. That, that's just kind of a corporate kind of thing that you do. They call you and say, and the bank is in Dallas, or the bank is in Raleigh, North Carolina, or the bank is wherever, and they say we just foreclosed on this house, but knock on the door. You've got the listing. See who lives there. If it's vacant, you need to secure the house. In, and if it's renters. You need to give them cash for keys, tell them they have 20 days to get a firm clean, and you'll come back with $5,000 and the keys are then to move. And then the lender sends you the money. Sometimes Fannie Mae Hyde doesn't, they reimburse you. So, but anyway, um, the notices of default are, are so important to me that I, as often as I can go on those appointments, I want to go on those appointments because we don't, we don't go there to list the house. We go there to explain to them what their options are. But when I was uh, 35 years old and going through a divorce, and I worked for a commercial firm and did property management, and my own house was in default. It was for sale. It had been for sale for a year because that's how it was in the 70s in Texas. And, and I didn't want to sell it. And so I let my sister move in with me, and she had a cha cha dog. And, uh, and we had guys in the closet, and that discouraged a lot of people. So, <laughs> but eventually, I was struggling financially and, and got behind on payments. And in Texas, and they do have 30 days, not 90. In California, you have 90 days before you go into default, and then you have 90 days to cure it. Texas, you know, if you're 30 days late, you're in default, and they start. And it was like, so my own house was in default, and I didn't know what to do because I was in commercial real estate and hadn't come across that situation. And I had two young boys in school, the elementary school across the street, and my sister and her child, child and um, good. When I got huh? I'm I'm good. Good. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so when I would call my mortgage company, my lender, you know, to get more information, all they would say is, "You, well, you need to borrow some money. You need to make payments. That's the solution. You need to, you need to catch up. You're too much behind. You need to catch up." And I'm like, "Must for sale. You know it." My ex husband explains everything. <laughs> we had an offer the first month we put the house on the market, and he said, Oh, we brought the price at too low. Let's wait and see what else we get. Uh, no more after that. So, um, and and our agent didn't work as well trained as maybe start day. They didn't think to go back to that realtor and say, mm -hmm. Does your buyer want to make another offer? Right? Because it's been another 30 days, we don't have any offers. Anyway, um, so. So people who are in default, and I've sat across the table with them, and some have a bad attitude, easy to understand, they, they, have, they have no hope, and they don't know what to do, and, and truly their dining room table looks like this, except it's all male, from what looks like government authorities and stuff to avoid foreclosure because the sheriff's coming and you're going to get locked up, and they have all these seals that they put on their envelopes, and they're realtors, they're real estate agents, and they're scaring people. You know, it's like you need to sell your house today, call us. And, and the other half of that mail is also from their bank or the mortgage company, and they just get tired of opening it. They don't know what their options are. And so, whenever we talk to those of the fall, it's giving 15 minutes to come tell me what your options are. Christmas Day, I was getting phone calls from my mortgage company, and I didn't know if the sheriff was going to come get me out of my house that day or not. You know, my kids were baking cookies, opening presents. My parents were coming for dinner. I didn't know, and no one would tell me. And so the Irish Catholic stubborn redhead, Virgo, said, I'm going to figure this out. And so I started talking to some bankruptcy attorneys and some realtor friends, and I figured out what the process was in Texas, just so I had peace of mind. 
that I could think clearly about what I needed to do with the next step. Yeah. What are their options here? They have a lot. They can they can rent the house out. Okay. You know, it, it depends on how far behind they are. They can rent the house out, or they can apply for a loan modification, which means that they that their mortgage company will will work with them on modifying the terms of the loan and look at interest rates and and do that. Sometimes they'll attach the default on the end, but they can do a loan modification if they still have income. It's like a refinance. But they're not refinancing; they're just working out the money. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So you can do the loan modification. You can rent the house, um, or you can do what's called a forbearance, where you can get the mortgage company to actually take the past due debt and put the whole thing on the end, like a like a golden umbrella. Instead of modifying the entire loan with lower interest rates, your payments are still the same. If you can prove you can make your payments, they'll take the two or three months you're behind and do the forbearance, putting it on the end of your note. Right? There are options. And, and most importantly, they need to know the sheriff is not going to walk up and serve them, right? That they're not going to get forced out of their house. And uh, unless unless it's an HOA and they're behind on the HOA dues, or then the HOA can file the forms. But that's a whole other story. But but all I want to do is is give them peace of mind. And if I have to do it on a Zoom call or a telephone, I will. If they don't want me in their house, I understand. But it's better if I can sit down in person with them and, and hand them the papers and show them what their options are so that they have the language. I didn't know what to ask for my lender except, what are my solutions? And they're like, pay a bill. I'm like, no, wait, that's not what I'm asking. You know, there's got to be another way. There's always a solution. So, and, and all of that too was, was, you know, 30, 35 years ago. So it's different now. Mm -hmm. But and especially with the COVID, with the pandemic stuff and the mortgage companies. You know, gotten a little more lenient, but now they're starting to kind of. There's a lot of people that are in default and probably need to sell. So again, it's about finding out what their needs are. What is your transition, and how can I help you? Because we have a lot of answers. We know a lot of stuff, and I know enough to know what I don't know, and where to find the answer for you. We have resources, right? We have escrow officers. We have lenders. We have attorneys we have we can find answers for you i'm your little black book and i'm just here to deliver you some peace of mind and i don't care if they ever list with me honest to god i don't i don't want to force somebody to sell their house that they don't need to especially here in california that's that's their lifetime asset that's gold you know because the market here in this part of southern california in our bubble rarely goes down it may go flat and then they, like during 2006 to 2008, they said, you know, we're, this guy, I was up in Palos Verdes and his house was about to get foreclosed on, he needed to list it for sale. And he's like, oh, I lost $200,000 last year. You got the amazing Michelle for yes. <laughs> on a Friday too. Thank you so much. You were awesome. So it was like, you know, he said, I lost $200,000 on the house last year because all the houses on the street are getting foreclosed on, which brings everybody's property values down. And I said, okay, sir, I don't want to be rude to you, but you paid $250,000 for this house that two years ago would have sold for a million two. Now it's going to sell for a million. So that 200000 was air, right? You didn't really lose that. Mm -hmm. when you gained $800,000. But, but that's a perception. And especially if they're engineers, which everybody on the hill is, Aerospace, right? and so they're they're analytical, and, and it's like, no, I lost two hundred thousand dollars. I said, when did you have it? Mm -hmm. You know, who took it out of your bank account? But to them, that is their bank account, and their perception is their reality. But sometimes you got to bring them back to reality a little bit too. So, so the so that's the listing appointment is to find out what do you need. Yeah, you need to sell your house, or you don't. But if you were to sell your house, what's the best scenario for you, and how can I facilitate that? And we have a listing agreement with us always. A lot of people anymore want to do DocuSign and have an electronic version, and we do too. But I always have the hard copy. I always have a hard copy of the listing agreement so I can leave it with them. Read through this because some people click through DocuSign and they haven't read it all and they'll have questions. So read through this, highlight where your questions are, call me, and then we'll put, and the price is not in there because we don't know the price at that point. So but as we're talking to them, we're probably coming up with a price and we know it in our head before we go what it should be. And we talk to them about that. And we have the, we have the CMA, 
We have the, what's currently on the market for sales, what your real competition is, appraisals right now, that you can't look at what's sold, right? Because things are changing. So we do look at what's sold so that they know that really the competition is what's on the market for sale. So we leave the listing agreement with them. What I love to do when I have time is also print out the purchase agreement so that this is what I'm gonna to bring to you when a buyer wants to buy your house. Their agent is gonna send this to me because the purchase agreement is so thick with all the amendments, right? And I'm like, so when we list your house for sale and someone wants to buy it, and it's all clipped together so they can look, I said, this is what I'm gonna to bring to you. And this is what I get paid to do, is to help you interpret this, look for the fine print, see where they've checked the boxes, you know, what, what's happening. Sometimes we don't have time to print that out and take it, but I always, always try because it is part of the whole file package. Whether the, whether the buyer has an agent or not, they're going to get presented with that document. So it adds value to what your expertise is, right? Because that's what we're bringing to them is our, is our expertise. So I always take the listing agreement. The ahas are your questions. And then a daily success system. I don't know what that is. Oh, if you, you click through it, it'll take you to yeah. the our little thing. Thank you. You were kind of like making oh, it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're making it your own. Okay. So, every that we've had has kind of like just gone off script. They might have given it. You have a piece of perspective, yes, which is nice. This, right? Yeah. You can't read my mind in our experience. No. <laughs> but you know, it just takes you through the slides. So, so like, yeah. So, I've heard that's been in the whole world that we have Carmen that we've known before because she's passed away. So my best friend in the world, Dad Jenny, used to tell me all the time, does your story have a point and an ending? Because I've got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> so, so don't have to check, you know, uh, hey, do you have a point and an ending? So that says, well, these are, I saw this when I was reading it last night. These are vital to your sales business. Some of those things are critical to your ability to build it to its highest level with the lowest cost and highest net. All of that is true, but seller listings started as leads too, right? And, and that's where, you know, the, I, I know people love to work with buyers and then you show it because that's where your passion is. That's where your energy goes, excuse me, where your energy goes, money flows. If you love buyers, knock yourself out. Um, and Gas prices are pretty good right now, so you don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. But but listings are my passion. Um, and and again, when you have a listing, you're going to meet buyers who need an agent. Exactly. But but, it, but they're all leads, right? Mm -hmm. And and they're ninety percent of the leads you're going to get are good leads, and you don't know where that space business is coming from. You don't know. And people that you build relationships with, and we do so much stuff for free. And everybody goes, why did you do that? You think you're paid to do that? And I'm like, I help somebody understand somebody about real estate. And that's like, like you get referred to a dentist, somebody's dentist. The dentist don't ask you for business all the time. Attorneys don't ask you to refer business all the time. Some do, but not all. But because you know, like, I can trust that person. And when somebody you're talking to says, my house got foreclosed on three years ago, and it wasn't, I don't think it was legal because, and I don't really understand what happened. My assistant came to me the other day with that because she bought a business for her mother, an Herbalife thing, and somebody came in there and they were talking, and our neighbors are there, and Gardena, and the house was foreclosed on three years ago. And they said, and she said, Well, did you have an attorney? And they said, Well, near the end, we did, but we don't really understand what happened. and it was about not making payments or something, but they made all the payments. They had a history of all the payments. But somebody, somebody stole the house. And 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 they do it all the time. I have I have three examples recently where it happened to friends of ours. And and so by helping them understand, Dr. So Gabriella came to me and said, Would you kind of look at this and see what you think? And I looked at it and I sent it to a, 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 a title. People and they looked at it and said that somebody somebody forged a deed transfer. It wasn't technically foreclosed on. Somebody forged a deed transfer somehow. And um, yeah. So I so let me do this before I get in trouble. So that's probably, <laughs> that's probably why Simon's giving here. Eight sellers. Okay. 
So now we're talking about leveraging your listings and leads because your leads, everybody that you meet is a lead. Everybody that you meet. Well, I don't like to even call them a lead. It's a, it's a future prospect or a referral for you for that reason. So I'll, I'll tell you a real quick story. I have a friend that she became my friend when I first moved here. Um, she called me because we had an apartment located in business. She had some rentals over at Plaza de Lago. She had a townhouse at Winsong and a townhouse at Summer Wind. And she needed to rent those. She lived on the Esplanade and Redonda Beach in that 700 building, which is Epel Shaw lives in the you know, three story townhouses with Cape Cod, Ocean View by Sapphire. So my client, Reggie, lived there, but I helped her rent her two townhouses that one went stocking and one at Summer Wind. And then uh, she and I got to be friends. And so, like uh, a year and a half, two years later, they're vacant again. So I, I never managed her properties because. She was um, frugal, as we say, from sure. She was frugal and she was local and she was retired from teaching school. And But we did run our vacancies for her because she made every her house in the state in the book and, and was jeopardizing, you know, breaking the law. So she would hire us to, uh, to run her vacancies. So cut to the chase 15 years later, <clears throat> Reggie had dementia coming in and I knew her, she was at the Silver Seekers program at the Eastern Self District. She went there to work out. I knew the social worker there, her name is Joy. And, and Joy called me one day and said, Reggie told me that um, you're trying to help her find some uh, caregivers. Somebody came in the other day and help with some shopping and get her bills paid and that sort of thing. She had a, she had a, a service animal, Lucy, who worked for the and, she, and I said, Joy, I am Reggie's friend. As a realtor, I really can't disclose any of her personal stuff to you. She goes, no, 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 I know. And I'm a, I, I'm a social worker. I get that. It's privacy. But she did tell me when she was in here this morning to call you and let you know that sometimes, you know, we have people that come through here. But she said, I wanted to advise you. It's probably in Reggie's best interest if she finds assisted living or someone who specializes in that level of caregiving, because she's probably going to need somebody eight hours, you know, 24 hours a day, three people. Mm -hmm. and, and she did not want to move. She went into age and place in her good condo that she so proudly bought by investing in her rental properties. So I talked to Reggie about that a couple of times, and the social worker suggested that I bring some of those people in to interview as caregivers with Reggie. So that they could segue her into understanding that she needed to be a living. And I'm like, that crosses a barrier of honesty to me. And and Reggie doesn't her dimension's not that bad. She's gonna have a sober moment or she's gonna kick my ass for her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it. Oh sorry, Colin, you recorded. <laughs> so, um, so so um, so we were we were working on it and and Reggie. 75, and a lady that lived in the neighborhood that she met when she was out walking Lucy all the time went to give her a birthday party. And so she went to the drink of Living Science. She invited some of her friends from there. And, and this lady called me and said, You know, can you help with the birthday party? And I said, Reggie at that point had leased her guest bedroom to a roommate. So she had somebody around all the time. And, um, and we were interviewing people who had come to the house and helped her with her grocery shopping. But this lady that she had met on the Esplanade was taking her to farmers markets and stuff, and making sure that you know she had a bottle of wine now and then. And so I so Reggie said, you know, it's Thanksgiving, it's the holidays. I know you're going to Texas. Let's pick up with this when you get back. And I said, okay. And when I got back, I called Reggie and uh, left her a message. I said, give me a call when you have a chance. And I didn't hear from her. And then I a Sunday afternoon. Um, like a week after, two weeks after Thanksgiving, three weeks after Thanksgiving, the phone rang, and there was a lady who uh, did not speak very good English, and then in addition to that, she was crying very hard, and she said, is this Michelle Brown? I said, yes, and she said, I need to talk to you about your friend Reggie, and I said, what about Reggie? And she was crying and crying, and I said, who is this? And she said, I can't tell you my name. My husband doesn't want me to get involved. I, you know, I, I cleaned Reggie's house once or twice, but she doesn't like to pay for the house cleaning. She doesn't pay well. And so, but, but I, 
I clean another person's house and I hear her on the phone with Reggie and um, Reggie doesn't live in her condo anymore. This person has uh, moved her thumb in and moved Reggie out. And I'm like, what is your name? And she said, I can't, I don't want to, I said, only give me your first name because I don't, I like, I will use your name a lot of conversations. It's hard for me to talk to somebody. So she gave me her first name. And, and she said, Reggie is at Kensington, which is assisted living. She's in a memory care, so she's locked in, can't get out. And, uh, and, and then this woman starts crying even harder. She said, they took Lucy. And I said, her dog, she said, Kensington doesn't allow pets in the memory care side of the facility. And they took her dog, told her the dog was sick and needed to go visit her mommy at the farm where she was born. And they gave it to some friend of theirs that, that took the dog to, to with the family in Mexico. So I said, all right, let me, let me get my head around this and figure this out. How can I call you back? And she said, don't call me back. My husband doesn't want me to get involved. And I said, okay, okay. So I got in my car and I went to Kinsey. And I told them who I was and, da, 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 and wanted to see Reggie. And they said, sure, no problem. So they took my card. I had to sign in and sign a waiver. And then someone has to take me because it's behind the locked doors. And when I walked in, that area, that section where everybody has their one room apartment, there's a common area dining room just for that section and a living area. So they're all on the couches watching football. And she smiled and she waved at me. And I had, I knew then she had no, uh, she knew she knew me. She didn't know who I was. Oh, wow. And so I went in and sat down next to her and I talked to her and I gave her my card. And I said, oh, I said, how, how is it that you're here? And she said, is this the most beautiful resort you've ever seen? You know, my friend that I met on the Esplanade told me I need to remodel my townhouse and that I should come stay in this resort for six weeks. It's a brand new resort for senior citizens near the beach in Redondo Beach, not as close as my house on wow. the Esplanade. So I'm here for about six weeks. And I said, Reggie, where is Lucy? And she said, oh, she's sick. She had to go back to the farm where she was born. Well, Lucy was 18 years old, you know? She had to go back to the farm where she was born. She had to go be with her mama and get some medical care. Then we'll go get Lucy when I go home. So I cried all the way home. And I got, I sat down and I got my laptop. And the first thing I did was call uh, her trust attorney because I knew him. And I said, Armin, uh, and I told the story I just told you. And while I'm talking to him, I'm pulling up the real estate records on her house. And I said, Armin, Reggie's condo is listed for sale. And I could tell, I can hear him clicking. So he's still, and this is Sunday afternoon, we're in the playoffs. And, uh, and I can hear him clicking away. And I said, her house is for sale. It's listed as out of area, 699 when you do your listings, you know, like Esplanade area is 157. And the other side of BCX is 156, and north of that is 155. And out of area is a universal code that, that something isn't in one of the NLS areas. It may be rural property or something. Um, so it was in 699. The agent that had it listed lived in National City, San Diego. It was listed for a million dollars. So they were hiding it. They were trying to sell it, but hiding it. And then Armin said, I won't tell you what Armin said, but he had one word, and I said, what is it? And he said, Reggie's not on title anymore. No. And I said, what? And he said, do you know someone named, and he put this woman's name in, and I said, yes. She's, and he said, she's not even on as a trustee. Reggie's not there. It would have been a quick claim, and this woman's on title. And I, he said, I have to go. I'll call you back. I'm going to go file a last pendants. So a less pendants means that there's a lawsuit pending. And if there's a lawsuit pending, like people file bankruptcy on their property, mm -hmm. title already says less pendants on there because you can't sell it. Mm -hmm. You can't transfer the title if there's a, a pending it right. 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 So he called a judge that he mm -hmm. knew and, and walked through and got the less pendants put on there so that if they did get an offer, they could sell it. That was four years ago. That was good. And, uh, and he keeps refiling the less pendants. And um, we keep trying to track down this woman. And there was a lawsuit against her for elder abuse and theft of real estate. An attorney called me. Is she an agent? I'm sorry, is she an agent or is she? 
No. No. She's a lady. Well, that would be a lot easier. Yeah. Like a con. Honor. Yeah. Con so, coincidentally, and I, I promise I'm going to let this, but, but it's things to look at more when you're talking to people, right? And, and it's because they don't know how to look for this. And, and my partner, Jennifer, specializes with seniors, and so now she's been giving seminars to the adult, adult children of seniors, isn't it? Because people don't know what to look for. And, and in the end, I, I got a phone call like two years after that. No, sooner than that. I got a phone call from an attorney in Hermosa Beach. She told me I was no longer the trustee on, on, on Reggie's uh, trust account. And that Armin was no longer the attorney, that he was the new attorney, mm -hmm. and that I should not have anything to do with Reggie, and that there was a new trustee, and that he was the new attorney, and I should turn the old trust over to him and drop it by his office in Hermosa. So I called Armin, and he said he hadn't heard of this guy, he didn't know anything about it, but in fact, that's what they did. And so this woman, I went to my drugstore to pick up my blood pressure medicine, which I don't know a lot with that. I bet. And I don't have guns anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, otherwise, I might have shot. But, uh, it's, sorry. No, no, no. So, <laughs> so uh, I, I was at my drugstore because I used to take Reggie there. We had the same drugstore to pick up her meds. The pharmacist said, Who's the new lady that comes in here with Reggie all the time? Oh, what? My God. You moved around in her? And I said, oh my God. And she said, Yeah, you know, you used to go to the bridge all the time or pick up her meds for her. And there's this new woman. And I said, Is her name? And she said, Yeah, I think so. And and she said, She just had, she just, she just had a brand new car, like the Mercedes SUV thing. And she got her eyes done. And, 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 uh, but she's been coming here with Reggie for about three or four months. But now she, at first, she, Looked like she didn't have much money. Now she looks like she's very well. <laughs> so in the end, you guys, her trust mob account, five hundred thousand dollars gone. And this, and because of the lawsuits, she hired an attorney when she got sued for the elder abuse stuff. She wouldn't comply with what the attorney needed, so her attorneys fired her. And so the attorney general, is that right? Attorney general. You mean the district attorney? The district attorney assigned her an attorney. They ended up firing her because she won't submit the paperwork. She won't show up in court. So now there's a, she's in a contempt of court. That charge is against her. And my pharmacist told me she's in the drugstore now because Randy's drugs now will go to Kensington. But there's another woman. This woman is bringing her to the drugstore to her prescriptions. So, so four years, and they still haven't been able to do anything. And, and I'm copied on all the legal stuff because I was mentioned as, you know, a party to the mm -hmm. There are... There are bills, printouts from American Express, Charles Schwab, and oh all of her credit cards. This sit on that trips to trips to Florida, trips oh. to uh, Cuba, trips to Canada, uh, dental work. I mean, all kinds of stuff. She's just sorry. Those things happen. I'm sorry, bring it down. But, but but so you know, people's houses get stolen. Yeah. yeah. This woman was flying her, over medicating her. The roommate. That Reggie had rented to was that woman's son who went in and told Reggie that he was a young chef just went from Spain and was going to be working in the area and needed the room and Reggie loved him. It was this woman's son. Yeah. It was a movie similar to that. Yeah. The lady. Yeah. On. It just yeah. recently. Yeah. Yeah. Because I care? Yes. 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 Yeah. 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 They don't care. <laughs> They care about them. Okay, so so let's talk about the virtues. The virtues of seller listings. Seller listings mean marketing opportunities. You have more control of your time. I don't know about that. Uh, they maximize your per hour comp compensation, and that's because okay, and volume, volume, volume. We'll explain all that. So we already talked about. And seller listings, you are on the front end of the pricing, and properly marketed seller listings bring you more business. So all that is true. Um, do you guys understand all of that stuff? You have questions about any of those? The, they maximize your per hour compensation because you're not, you know, driving around all of LA County showing properties oh, right. and, and all of that stuff. And but but I don't know about if you're doing a good job, you still have a lot of expenses on the sales side because you have photography and you have, you know, we don't put many signs up anymore. The the pandemic, before the pandemic, 
Our clients were already not wanting signs on the yard and lock boxes on the doors, which the west side hasn't done for a long time. Mm -hmm. But but you we deal with a level of clients, especially in South Bay, that are a lot are widows, but a lot are uh, upper tier, higher income. They have passports, they have prescription medications, they have jewelry, they have art, and some of the people that come through their house aren't there to buy the house. Yeah. In their cases, I'm sorry. So a friend of mine is a plastic surgeon, was in her house, uh, horse property. She was one of the first women Olympians, but she's a plastic surgeon, doesn't do plastic surgery anymore because she was thrown from a horse that broke her hands. She lives in her house over there to move up to Manhattan Beach, a smaller house. She was going through her third divorce. I went and helped her pick out some finishes because she was redoing the floors in her house and getting rid of the smell of the kitty in the daughter's bedroom. That daughter got the color, so we had to treat the floors. All that stuff, and then she called me and said, "So Michelle, there's an open house at my house on Sunday, and I'd really like you to come by, you know, take a look at the buyers." And I said, "What?" And she said, "Yeah, this is my house with, you know, Colleen." And I said, "Gail, okay. <laughs> what?" And she said, "Well, she's a she's a loyal client of mine, you know. She does because when when Gail couldn't do plastic surgery anymore, she started doing all the injectables." And Colleen does a lot of injectables, and I don't do injectables yet. And so I have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> so, so she said, you know, you're not a, you're not a patient of mine. She's been a patient of mine for four or five years. Well, I was going to have to do a to her. And I said, oh, okay, well, I mean, that's a $2 million listing. And this was oh, six years ago. It's, yeah. So I said, well, do I have to help you find a house and I might be? And she said, well, she's kind of going to do that too because I'm getting the listing, you know. I said, okay, all right. Three days later, she called me and said, Can I come talk to you? And I said, Sure. So I said, Your house is too big for one agent to have an open house. Today, right? mm -hmm. It's just, it's, it was a four, four and a half thousand square feet, 4,500 square foot home with a corral and a paddock. Maybe you'll understand that. So people know what right. <laughs> Because, so there was a, because she was an Olympian and she loved her horses, she had a six stable, six uh, stall stable because she boarded horses for some friends. And she had and she had a mucker that came every week or something, but she also had a tack room and a cigar room and all the stuff, and a pool and a yoga room, mm -hmm. and the gates on the back open yeah. to the uh, trails to the water. Good luck, one person. Yeah, so it's not more like obviously private showing kind of a thing, yeah. so you can show you know, everybody around. Yeah. Yeah. She called me, she said, I need to talk to you, I need to come see you. I need some, I need some help, I need some information, I need some advice. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so she comes here and said $45,000 worth of diamonds, jewelry, stolen floors. Floor safe. Floor safe in the closet in the master bedroom. And I said, I didn't even know you had one of those. And she said, well, I guess Colleen put it in the MLS. <gasps> what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Apparently, on Saturday, these people came to the comfort I was like, yeah. oh, come in and get it. Yeah. You know, I said, I she said, I didn't leave the safe unlocked. And they're there, they're the, the broker who's no longer a business, but the broker of that real estate firm, I would imagine, uh, said, You must have left your safe unlocked, you must have left it open. And she said, I wouldn't leave my safe unlocked. Well, right? well, and, and so, after investigation and stuff, what happened was people came to us Saturday oh. and got Colleen to take them out, show them the stable, show them where. So, yeah. yeah. And so, while they're out, they're their good. buddies come in. Immediately go there. They don't even have to look for the safe. They know where they're going. Immediately go there, figure out how they can work the combo. The next day, this couple comes back with their parents to show their parents the property. And while they're out showing the gates to go out to the horse trail and stuff, because this is like a two acre property, mm -hmm. that got those guys come back to us to save this. So, um, well, yeah. So that's again about our integrity and knowing what we're doing. And, um, I don't know why I got off on that, but <laughs> stuff for you to look for. Seven stem seller cycle service. Okay, so the lead conversion, pre listing, the listing consultation, servicing and marketing. Don't put the safe in the MLS. <laughs> it's a closing gift. We'll tell you when we're in SCA. Yeah. And then the offers and the negotiations, the contract to close, and the post close system. Um, so the post close system is where the 
I think you guys, do you know all those steps so far? Or you can write it down if you have a question or ask me now. But the post closed system, if you're going to talk about servicing your seller and how to win with sellers, that, that's where you stay in touch with them. And you send them anniversary cards, right. birthday cards, and congratulations on selling your relationship. Here's your $500 gift certificate at your Home Depot so you can go buy a grill or you know whatever you're doing. And, and that part, but that gift is going to vary on um, you know how much the, the seller the property was. Um, but that's all about selling services. I'm sure you're right. Yeah. So thank you. So um, I have two exceptions that we disagree with. Yeah. There, but um, there, as I said, you never know where you're. you're oh, that's why I got off on the stolen property. Mm -hmm. Because the HOA at Reggie's building have people calling me that live there that want to sell their property because they know me because we've been so involved with the attorney general and all the stuff over there, the district attorney. Okay, so we get to talk about AHAs, and do you guys want to take a break? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So get the appointment. We've done all this, right? No. We, so, we we talked about a lot of it, like we'll during talk. the time we didn't like formally go over. Okay. Like, we'll start everything individually, but okay. Why don't we take a break? And when you come back, we're going to answer questions and talk about AHAs. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. Come in. Come on. You guys are great. You're patient. Um, Ten minutes. Ten fifteen. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's like, yeah, yeah. what am I talking about? Like, yeah, I think, like, you know, the base, like, the lifting, or like, what if she like, you do a bar also to bring it? He's like, you know, the very easy, the your legs, and your arm. Yeah, you're not using say, one family in the whole thing. Yeah, or yeah. yeah. just like working on the in the gym, like, with a straight I'm sorry. And you hold your like all the bare hole in the gym that are all the way into the top and then like what like oh they'll pass the point to this. Yeah. Yeah. So you have a gym membership. I used to do it when I lived in the gym when I had a But do you like one of
Yeah, I've been going like as much as we chose to test and stuff. And it's yeah, kind of been a really great. I know I had a book on the whole time. It's done that way. Yeah. 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 Like, like, nine or nine, you know, six to five, nine. Now, we do we or how many days? Yeah, we do a rotation. You know what I mean? But, like, that, yeah, it's really decent. So, like, it's really decent. There's a link on it. It's not going to be nice. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. And I didn't want to always check that, but it's like, yeah, so I can just bring them up and let's go. And then have, if you are down for next week, I'm still down. So yeah. For sure, let me know. Yeah, for sure, make a plan. Go off. Thank you. Thank you. Downtown, Pamela Brown. Wait, did you sign this in? Oh, you're Okay. How I don't think it's you. How are you doing today? I'm good. It's a little sore, but I'm good. <laughs> mm -hmm. I saw it. I was like, oh my God, I still want to be doing that. And I'm like, okay, I just need to talk to her. I know. Yeah, no, for sure. I, um, I need to be like crazy, like CrossFit girl for a yeah. really long time. And I'm going to say that now, like, as I'm getting older, like, the, that rigorous workout, so they're great, obviously, and we, you know, I think that every day should include a little bit of weights in some capacity, but I was killed, I was killing myself back then, and I can't really do that level as much anymore. And I was going to say, what is being two? Stay two. Stay two. So I tried this class pass thing because it's affiliated with all kinds of gyms, right? right? Different workouts, different going out of my comfort zone, right? So, so I did it online. You can still go to no uh, so like, like so you basically yeah. sign um so okay you get a membership right you okay. sign up for the month right now the month is free and you get an allotment of points so like 43 points for the month. Okay. So then you pull up like what are your interests you looking for clients you can bring over you looking for whatever you can do the searches based on your zip code or even if you want to go all the way to west l it wherever you want to do um if you want to take a dance class they even have like spa treatments in there that in there that you can use for your point it's crazy i know i was like it's all like a bunch of it's i can't even tell you 
how many different things you can do with it. But you get the class, it's available. Like, let's say everybody's scheduled like my week next week or like Monday through Friday. And you like, you you have a bomb with her, you can just go and everything you want to go and use it. Yeah. So, okay, so this is not free. I believe the membership starts at like 70 a month, if I'm not mistaken, but you're getting accessibility and so many things, not just one gym, boop, 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 boop. You know what I mean? Yeah. You use those cards for the cash. Yeah. What gym are you? I told him I'm trying this free trial right in the class class. Oh, my daughter, my daughter loves class. See, I honestly you can eat all the math for one gym. I'm going to do some more class. 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 Oh my gosh, it's an amazing one. And I never tried this. I've always wanted to, like for years, and I never did. I always just stuck to a gym. Right. But I, and now I can do the gym and then I can do the and I can do the right. I should get my husband. Um, you can try it. Gyms are tired. No, it's not. I don't know. They have a good show on the Pacific Gyms. So, you know, that's one of the big issues. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I was like, I did it. It's not like yours, you know, if you want to, but like for me, I was telling you, and then I used to be like, I would have that at the time. I would be like, 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 I like, I would be 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 like, I and so, um, like Kelly, like I just like that. Like, like, that's just not my get down. I just need something to do. me, like, you know, I try to stay in the mix. Yeah, for sure. Now, I am going to do something like that because I already have a member of you, but like, it's not going to be my new group. Oh my God. I can't. So on a break, I was asked to talk about about lead generating with sellers to get appointments and yes. where you start because some people tell us to call us buyers, some people tell us to call oh, for sell by owners. For sell by owners, there's not many. Thank you, God. People in South Bay love realtors. <laughs> you know, and there's a thousand of us. Well, Alice Bray Association of Owners have eleven hundred members. South Bay Association uh, of Realtors has 4,000 members. That's 5,000. I think there's more realtors than there are fraternities in this. Uh, but, and then there's the Inglewood Association of Realtors, and they, they've got somewhere between six and 800. They're not sure because they don't have a good accounting team over there. But for uh, five, so we've got 6,000, we have 6,000 realtors in the South Bay. That is people that belong to the Association of Realtors. Have a realtor designation in Fayette News and good standing. There are another five to six thousand real estate agents who are even standing with the Department of Real Estate, don't have a realtor designation because they sell commercial real estate and they don't see any need to belong to the Association of Realtors. They don't need the MLS 
and they don't like my code of ethics, and they they bunch of you know that's all the CBRE people, and so and they're 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 uh, they are in integrity. They are ethical real estate agents. They have big practices, but they don't need a realty designation, so they don't. Some of them belong to BOMA, which is the Building Owners uh, Management Association, and some of them belong to the Property Management Institute, and some of them don't belong to any organization, but they're not realtors, so they don't belong to, they're not in that group that come that day of people who residential real estate. But to address uh, address what to say, so I would, I would, I would, what we do with the, with the by owner is we're, I'd send them the contracts, most especially the ones that would come from a buyer. Like I told you, I would print out, take it by there, or send it to them and just say, I know you want to sell your house yourself, but I wanted you to see what the documents are required in the state of California, so you know what to expect from a buyer to have an agent. If there's anything else I can help you, we come from contribution. <laughs> just want you to know, you know, this is it. If I can help you, call me. I don't go over there trying to list the house because if they had wanted me to call it. So it's not building the relationship and seeing what I can do for them. It's not getting done. Yeah. Do you call them or you show them on the phone? Sometimes, but it depends on what I have. Mm -hmm. If they have, you know, if it's a for sale by owner that's active in Zillow or on the uh, for sale by owner.com website, I will usually send them a text or mail them something first because they're getting another phone call. They're going to get lost. That, that's like with the expired. So let me tell you, when my son, my son, is a professional jazz musician, went to the University of North Texas on a scholarship and um, moved, took his, he was here for a long time and he took his band and moved to Nashville. And when he moved to Nashville, he fell in love, he was 44 years old and pretty much a rock that musician, play for me. So, yeah, play boy? I love it. <laughs> yeah. So I have a collection of his old girlfriends. They'll call me if you want to know what's happening. They love them and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Both of my boys are that way. Like, and, and Jeff is 45 and still single. And he's a musician, he's a drummer, and he's a disc jockey and a strip drawing mentality. Um, high wind gentleman's play. Uh, and 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 then my daughter is a physics major and she's a violinist and plays fiddle in the band band. It's the business things. So she's a realtor, they have day jobs. So my son is in Nashville, but he moved his band there. You know, the young lady fell in love, watched the photos there, she was in Atlanta. Her grandfather went to um, Air Force One, he's still at the college in New York. Uh, not in London. No, it starts with her. It's mm -hmm. military school. Um, uh, oh, Annapolis? Annapolis. Her grandfather went to Annapolis, her father went to Annapolis, her son went to Annapolis, that's him. And uh, her mother passed away. So these three men. Or like running her life. She was a nurse practitioner at Vanderbilt. He fell in love and wants to get married. And he said, Mom, I got to tell I got to get a real estate license. I got to start a real estate business because I got to do, do this old fashioned. I got to go to Atlanta. Her man likes to drink whiskey and smoke a cigar with me. But his new wife is getting him to stop all that stuff. And I've got to ask this man for his daughter's hand in marriage. And, and if I were him, Talking to a 42 year old rock star musician that's never been married before. Uh -uh. I, I don't know that I would give, like, give that person my daughter. Right? <laughs> and I said, okay, I'm going to tell you two things. We get your license in six weeks. We start to be there. That's great. And, 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 and you need to know that a lot of people don't see a big difference between those of and so rock stars, but still, at some point, you have no benefits and you your own gifts. Okay. So the same. Ah. I'm just saying there's a lot of little wells. So uh, but it all worked out and they got married happily ever after. And we had a on the floor old granddaughter. But but when he got his license in Nashville, I said to him, go to everyone in your phone and call everyone in your phone. You've got to get an Apple phone. You can't work out there and have an LA phone. So you've got to either get a second number. Or change phones and then call everyone in your phone. I I have 3,000 people in my database in Korean that are either past clients or family members or somebody that I know. I have another 3,000 in my phone and half of them aren't even in Korean yet, right? Because I save numbers and stuff. So I said, call everyone in your phone, tell them you have moved to Nashville and you are still a singer songwriter, but you also have a real estate, you're expanding family business and real estate. And, and he's like, Mom, 
everyone in my phone, because he always, he's a Virgo too, so he's a control freak. And he always managed his own bands. He has a jazz band and he has a country western band. And uh, he said, everyone in my phone either owns or manages bars or clubs, because I would always call them. If they booked a wedding in Napa, my son would book two gigs on the way up so they could stop and play a couple of evenings and then two nights on the way down at different places so they have money on the road, right? And, and get exposure. So he's like, everybody in my phone either owns or manages a bar or, or a nightclub or a restaurant that has music, or their groupies, or their <laughs> producers. I'm like, those people still need a place to live, and everyone's moving to Nashville. Yeah. So just call, right? So he did. He called everyone in his phone and said, hi, this is Chris Brown. You remember me? I have you in my phone. I moved my band from LA to Nashville, but um, I'm expanding my mother's real estate business. We have a team here now. If there's anything you need, want to buy, sell, or rent real estate, let me know. And I have your phone number. It's my Nashville number. That's your warm call. You're giving them your good phone number to your groupies, right? Within four weeks, he had two listings and two buyers and a referral from me because one of his friends who he met as a groupie in the band worked for UPS and transferred to Nashville. And his mother owned a duplex in Lanita and she missed him and his wife and her grandkids. So she wanted to sell her duplex and move to Nashville. So I got a listing. He got her. He got her. He got a, a bass player that I sold her to when I know her husband was going to go. She lived in Nashville. He wasn't there then, but she was ready to downsize. So he sold her house and helped her find it. Within four weeks, he had <laughs> three, oh, three hours. Hours. Yeah. Call everybody in your phone and figure out what to tell them. Like, I don't, you know, this is too bad. And I don't work for UPS anymore. I don't work at Chick-fil-A anymore. I started a real estate team or I started a real estate business. And if you don't know that wants to buy or sell or rent, please have, don't discount renters, you guys. Okay. Mm -hmm. My sister. Took a regular one time in Capel, Texas, right outside of Dallas, uh, on a rainy Sunday afternoon. This guy and his wife and two kids needed to rent a three bedroom house right away. Their budget was like $2,000 a month, a rainy, cold Sunday afternoon in Dallas, and nobody wanted to take them. And my sister took them out and showed them some houses because she grew up like I did in the property management business. She took them out, showed them three homes, and they rented one. Four months later, he was signed a permanent contract with the Dallas Cowboys and bought a three million dollar house. So you never know where your next piece of business is coming from, right? And and that kind of loyalty, they knew and liked to trust her, and she went out on a rainy Sunday afternoon with no other So so I'm advising you to call everybody on your phone, tell them what your new career is and how they can reach you, and give them your email address and ask them to text you there so you can update your contact information to phone. I'm also going to advise you not to call current expires. I went to a listing presentation last week on a guy that referred to us, his house just expired, and he said, I've had 126 phone calls in the last three days from a list of phone calls. And I was telling that to my neighbor because it's two on a lot. The guy that lives in the front house was telling him that. He said, I don't even use my phone anymore. And he said, Oh, you can come show around here. They left the street and they got over. And so that's so don't call current experts. And I gave my son that advice. Age, public age expires. Yeah. Oh. Somebody whose house didn't sell six months ago. Look back three to six months, your house didn't sell. And, and you can look up and see if it's listed or activated again. Call them and say, I know your home was for sale four or five months ago. Contrary to popular belief, there are very many active buyers in the market, and, and we have a shortage of inventory, which would be interested in selling it again. Do that. Don't call it. Don't. The, the current expires won't answer the phone. And if they do answer the phone, they're going to say some words you don't want to hear. <laughs> so, okay. So, um, what sellers want most from their agent is to help price the home competitively. That's going to take a minute because they want you to tell them that their house is worth what they think it's worth. Mm -hmm. But so it's going to take a conversation to show them the competitive pricing and to help them market the home to potential buyers. That's huge, and, and you need to let them know. You know that at KW we have, you know, we have in-house marketing to all of our offices and agents too, and that our MLS goes out to everywhere in California. We have one of the few MLSs, the CR MLS that we belong to, is the California Regional Multiple Listing Service. Those are separate companies. If you don't know, the MLS is a separate company from the Association of Realtors. That that they're like the plug and play. So our dues to our association 
you know, you have your analysts are separate of that, but you have to have a road to designation to get in there. So what people don't understand is that the CR MLS is California regional. So you can look at properties in Sacramento for that. Mm -hmm. You can look at, you know, there are there are four uh, there are four association of realtors who don't belong to the California Regional NLS. The one was the California LA West Side called CLAW, C L A W, California LA West Side. Uh, I mean Central LA, Central LA and West Side. It's CLAW. There is a way when you log into the MLS, you can get into CLAW. You can look at their properties. But my my partner Jennifer and I just a house not too long ago in Pleasanton. Which is just outside of the Napa Valley, Napa Valley area. Yeah. There are so many solutions. I want to expand your consciousness for a minute that when you get referrals, never say no. Don't say no. I can't do that. It's outside my area. Call me. We can work this out. Don't turn down commercial business. Call me. Don't turn down sports and entertainment because we have to sign um, confidentiality agreements with that because we can't talk about who our clients are. But never say no. Just say. I, I, there's an agent that I work with in my office that we work together on this. We work together on this, and I am not greedy. So it's not a 25% referral fee. I will take it with you 50 50 and teach you that walk you through it all the time. And then the second one that you do, we can do differently on like the 60 40 or 70 30 split, and then you should be able to do it on the So, and, and that's just 60 70% is to you, not to me. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, because I don't want to turn down business and I want to help people. So know that you have options. We we listed property in San Diego. The one we listed in Pleasanton uh, was a trust attorney that we work, a probate attorney that we work with. The family whose family member owned the house and they passed away. They were renting that house out for three years. They lived in Los Angeles. The probate was filed in Los Angeles. We know the probate courts in Los Angeles. And that attorney called us and said, "Can you list something in Pleasanton because the sale is going to be subject to court approval." What that means is the judge is afraid that family members are going to be fighting over who's selling it and getting a car sale. So they want the judge to approve that the sale is legitimate. So all family members get their share. And he knows that we know the LA courts. And I said, sure. So Jennifer and I got on a plane. Like two days later, we, we flew to San Jose, we drove to Pleasanton, and we talked to the renters and they took his house and they were in the process of moving out and we got it listed. And there's no Keller Williams agents around there. And I'm past president of the Women's Council Realtor. So I called them and I said, I said, who do you have that specializes in this area? She came over and met us and I said, I'll pay you 25% referral fee to show the property. If you have to buy it, the buyer's yours. We don't want part of that. And she said, deal. I said, you put your sign up. Put your sign up, put your mock box on, advertise yourself because we don't work here a lot. But it's probably the probate attorney already sent. And so she's like, okay, so so you know that's fourteen or fifteen thousand dollars I didn't see coming, mm -hmm. and that's after we gave her the twenty five percent as kind of co listing agent. She's thrilled. She since they referred us here, and she got to put her sign up and got to be known in that neighborhood and, and do her flyers and door knocking and all that was before the pandemic. But there's always opportunity. You never know where it's coming from. And don't say no until Simon tells you you can't do it, or I tell you that I won't. Because one thing I won't do is anything that involves automotive or heavy industrial, like um, like Jiffy Loops and car repair shops and uh, anything where there might be soil contamination because there are inspection there called Phase One and Phase Two, which are environmental reports. What about construction companies that need like a yard as well, like for travel? We do right? that. I have one right now. I'm looking for. Okay, I might need to talk to you. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking for a property with a yard for my termite company, actually. So, um, yeah, we do that. That's not heavy industrial. Okay. So, so, and and there is there are people here on other teams, commercial teams that do heavy industrial. So you just go to sign and they'll tell you who to talk to, right? At the second industrial. But don't, but don't turn down an opportunity because if you're not familiar with it. Um, just be talk to Simon about who you should work with because not everybody's as generous as as you are. <laughs> Sorry, Holly. So um, okay, so so don't call regarding expires, call everybody in your phones, call what we call age just started three to six months ago. And um for someone or another. Take them something, you know, that they're going to need. Just let them know if you're in the neighborhood. And uh, uh, cancel, cancel the end of starters are one group, right? You can't call properties that are on hold or withdrawn because those are technically still listed with the listing agent. They like 
like I have property that we put on hold because my seller, his wife is sick and they're trying to figure out which offer they're going to take and I'm getting a million calls and they don't want to show it anymore. They have two offers they really like. So we just put it on hold. Uh, we're not showing it, but I still have a listing. And, and withdrawn is the same way. We sometimes have properties that are withdrawn because somebody gets sick or they have family coming in from out of town or they get a grizzly and they need to fix it. I just have a listing there. It's just withdrawn for about a month until they get that fixed. Canceled and expires for three games. So whenever we search expires, we also search for canceled listings too. And then we're all going to be three six months canceled or expired. Yeah. Uh, and th those are our primary sources of listing. Those and then the referrals that come from people that, that we know that, that you know love and trust us. So um, help sell a home within a specific time frame. Again, that's finding out what their transition is. Mm -hmm. And what they need to have that happen, and then find ways to fix up the home to sell it for more. Um, sometimes we do that, sometimes we don't. It depends on their financial circumstances. We have a list, uh, which is the if, there, if, if you don't have heating and you don't have hot water, you've got to fix that because that's a health and safety issue, and the lenders are going to look for it. And you, you got it. You have to provide the heating, and you have to provide the stove, and you have to provide hot water. Those things have to be fixed. And uh, sometimes you can find a vendor that will bill it to escrow. But in the last 10 years, there were so many escrows that fell out that a lot of vendors won't do that anymore. But but we have resources. You can find people that have that. So if it's health and safety, they got to fix it, right? If it's cosmetic, they don't have to. And if it's near the end of the line, like an AC system or something like that, then you can tell them they may have to credit the buyer when the buyer does their inspections. Not the full ten thousand dollars to replace the heating and air conditioning, but if if it's got five years left on it's fifteen year life, you might have to credit them like five or six thousand dollars on that. Okay. Uh, Set and close to appointment tactics show the benefits. Take back close. Negative. Oh, those are the types of closes. Close to appointment. Show the benefits. Take back close, negative positive close, give them what they're looking for. Okay, let's see what those are. Um, questions versus, okay, so let's go back here because I guess we're not going to move on to that. So the, the show the benefits, that's what you do with the pre listing package. If you take them about who you are and what your success records are, that's talking about yourself again so that they know the benefits of working with you. And, and the benefits of working with you is that you have a huge team at Keller Williams that, can, that is, provides huge resources for them. Anything that they need, we can get that for them. The take back close is to kind of act like you don't really care to work with them or not, but not in a mean way. Just like, well, you know, the, what, what you want is an unrealistic expectation we can't get there. And they go, well, what, what do you mean? And how do we get there? So you take back close. Negative positive is a little bit of both of those. You know, here's the pros, here's the cons. You want $2 million for your house. I think it's worth 1.7. And um, if, if we can get $2 million, I'm all for it because I'll make money because you make money. But my job is to help you sell your house. So realistically, I don't think you're going to get that. And here's why. And show them the cost, right? Give them what they're looking for. That would be, you know, listed overpriced. I've been known to take an overpriced listing. <laughs> um, but but I always tell them, you know, because we're very transparent. And I'm like, you want three hundred thousand dollars more for your home and what it's worth it. Somebody may think that that golf course view is worth that. So let's try it. If you don't have an offer in ten days, we need seriously talk about reducing the price or canceling the list. I'm just I'm, that's how it is. Um, I have no idea what a trial close is. The assumptive close is where you're talking all through the presentation, assuming you're going to get the list right. So that means you, you speak to it as if you have it. You know, we're, we're going to sign a paperwork today. It's Friday. Probably can't get my photographers in here until Monday, maybe Tuesday. They'll get the photographs back Wednesday, maybe Thursday. We can go live on Friday and have an open house that weekend. Or so that you're just talking, assuming that you already have a close and letting them know what the protocol and the criteria is going to be from there. That's assuming. That's the assumption. The timeout close, I think it's a little dated, um, but lots of people still use it. Like, so I think we should get your house on the market by next week, don't you? 
you know, and it's like try to give them the feedback in a positive way. I can't talk to people that way, but I see people that are really good at it and do a great job at it, and, and I don't. So I don't, I, I, we don't use a lot of the tie downs because it just sounds scripted to me, but it sounds a little bit insincere. But if, if you can manage it, there are agents that I know that use it very well, and it, it sounds natural coming from them. But I, I get kind of nauseated and start to stutter and stuff, and I have to do that because I'm not comfortable. I'm not comfortable. I will guide people through the conversation so that they know where we're going, but that's in their best interest so they can stop me like you guys do at any point when there's rhetoric or you don't understand what I'm saying or what back up. What does that mean? So I like to guide people through the process, but I don't like to control the conversation with the tie downs so that they're not comfortable asking questions and talking to me about what they really need. Okay. Uh, questions versus objections. Questions can be answered. Objections are addressed, right? So that's like they don't they don't want open houses. That's an objection. Well, I don't want a bunch of open houses. I don't want a bunch of strangers here. That's fine. That's what you want, and we're here to facilitate what you want. A little bit by appointment only. You know, this is how it will go. So, but a, a question is, what do I need to do to fix up the house? I mean, questions get answered. Objections you overcome. A house? Do you have a house? Okay. Pre-listing packet, we already talked about that. The purposeful approach is, this is a millionaire real estate agent book to go from E to P. To, we're entrepreneurs, but we want to go to purposeful approaches to being entrepreneurs so we're making some money. Because you can walk around all day and say that I'm an entrepreneur, I own my own business, I'm self-employed, but until you're producing and doing what comes naturally and making some money, there's a lot of entrepreneurs around here that you know, are collecting food stamps and checks and stuff. We don't do that, we work. Um, Pre-listing packet goals, we already talked about this. Build the seller's confidence, answering their questions and objections before your presentation, that's in the book, right? Mm -hmm. To the extent that we anticipate what some of the questions will be. Save time, make the consultation experience smoother and shorter by tackling common obstacles. We tackle what their transition is, that's our approach. And then state your value, tell the seller what you bring to the table. And what we bring to the table is the experience that we put in this book that we gave you. And, and our, our testimonials from our clients are in there. Am I going too fast? <laughs> okay, pre-listing packet criteria. Will you review it in the listing presentation? We don't. We send it to them in advance and ask them if they have any questions about it when we're there, but we don't really. We get that to them beforehand. Does it eliminate the need for a listing consultation? No. The listening consultation is to find out what their transition needs are and to see if there's any upgrades, renovations, anything that might add value to the house, or if the M word is growing in the in the master bedroom and that needs to be addressed. If anything, it's like the resume before your interview, right? That's exactly right. Okay. That's exactly right. Uh, it is primer for education you will provide at the listing consultation. Yes, the primer. For education that we provide, though, is not the pre-listing packet. The primer that we present is showing them what an offer will look like if we only have a buyer and um, kind of walking them through the steps of what the process is from the time that we list until we close, right? Uh, pre-listing packet, that's what the front page looks like. That's the one that's in uh, command, I think. And seller consultation. Deliver the pre listing packet, confirm the appointment date, ensure all decision makers attend. Really bad at this. <laughs> uh, because if I can get an appointment, I'm going to go. And if I can't convince them to work with me and convince the significant other or the partner or somebody else to, then we can come back. But if I can get an appointment, I go. I'm just saying. <clears throat> um, ensure that all decision makers attend. I will tell you one time there were. Two young men that I was mentoring in the weathers, and they were knocking on doors in North Redondo Beach for notices of default. And during that time, in 90278 zip code, there were 100 notices of default. And when you door knock the notices of default, you can't like get out of the car and walk a block and leave a flyer. You know, we have to go to each house, and they were brothers. And I said, do 20 a day. You do 20 a day, that'll take you about an hour and a half, two hours a day. At the end of the week, you will have completed the hundred, right? So do 20 a day, go to these hundred homes, and here's the flyer. Know what your options are if you're in default. 
be sensitive to that because the person that's in the house may be a renter. It may be an adult child that's living there and they don't know that the house is in default. So just, I don't know. My, I work with agents that specialize in knowing your options and they just actually do deliver this, right? So they don't like start their own exam. <laughs> so, so they did that. They went to 20 houses a day for a week. And I said, next Monday, we'll have a new list because some of those people will have listed some of those, there'll be new ones that come out because that was in the time when there were a lot of them. So every Monday, I'll give you a new list and a new stack of flyers. But this way, one of you can stay in the car. The other one can go knock on the door and, and leave the flyer if they don't answer or hand them the flyer when they do. It'll be faster that way because you're not going to reach Manhattan Beach. You have trouble parking sometimes. Within two weeks, I had two listings. We had a $600,000 listing on Flagworth, and we had a $1.2 million listing on Spreckles because of these visits these young men made to those properties. Wow. Mm -hmm. and, and, they, the, and the one of them said, um, can you come like on Wednesday at nine o'clock? So they called me, yes, I can. So, because they always say, there's, a, there's a, an agent on our team that specializes in options. And um, she needs to be here because we don't really know what those are. Yeah, when you're done, I'm sorry. I want to oh, okay. I'm going to have to be done. I'm just letting you, like, nodding to let you know. Um, in that scenario, because it's such a delicate situation, um, obviously, I actually just read something um, regarding foreclosures being up just minimally as compared to, like, let's say last year, 2019. Um, so let's say that's something that I want to target. And what exactly do you put on the flyer? Know your options. Avoid foreclosure. Avoid foreclosure. Know your options. We'd like to visit with you 15 minutes. Okay. Either in person or on Zoom. I can help you with that. I'm not going to share. I'll share this flyer with you. Oh, okay. that would be great. Yeah. Thank you. So just uh, remember yeah. to let me know because I get busy and I forget. I can text you, but don't tell don't tell Simon or Carlos. Yeah, not at all. Yeah. Just, just remind me, send me your email. Okay, thank you. It's in word. I actually just took your email down, so I'll email you. Okay, thank right. you. We're all in emailing for that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's very simple. It says avoid foreclosure, know your options. And then it says forbearance, modification, or renting. Yeah, it's very simple. And I need 15 minutes of your time, either a Zoom or in person. Yeah, because like, you know, you, you would think some people would just like over, like over promise mm -hmm. something on a flyer, and that's where it could get right. dicey. Right. No, that's we, don't, we, don't, we don't want to do that. Okay. And there's, there's, there's 300 other people doing that, and some are investors that want to flip the house. And exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Just, you know, that's not our intention. Our intention is to really help them understand this. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so these two young men that were here, um, the office was configured differently than general and everyone would walk in and drop the desk all on there. They're here working on getting their information together to go to that appointment where the lady had said that the gentleman who owned the house couldn't be there. He had to work that day, so she really wanted the information to talk to them about. He owned uh, auto mechanic and repair, both they did both mechanical and body work um, in, in one of the other suburbs in the beach cities, and he worked 10 or 11 hours a day. And um, he couldn't be there, but she would like to have that information so she could talk to him about it. They were not legally entitled together, but they were a couple. And uh, so in the morning, I had another appointment. And, and when I came out of that appointment, I was going to head over there to that appointment. And these two young men called me and said, we need to call and cancel this appointment. And I said, what? I said, you're supposed to be printing out the cops. You know, I did on my son, you print them out, meet me there. And they said, no, there's an agent that, this agent's no longer with this office. There's an agent walked up behind and said, what are you guys doing? And so we told them, no, we got this appointment. We're going to go try to list this house. And, um, and I'm like, you're not going to try to list the house. We're going to tell her what her mm -hmm. options are. Mm -hmm. But they said, well, anyway, he said, we shouldn't go if, if all parties aren't there. Like you're going on Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock and, um, and the, all parties are gonna be there. And they said, no, just to talk to the lady that answered the door. And he goes, you need to cancel the appointment. You should never, but this is the same guy that told me not to work with a buyer and show up three houses to buy. So, <laughs> but um, they, he said, you should go on an appointment where all parties, all the decision makers aren't there. And I said, okay, do not call her and cancel the appointment, I'm going. You can choose to show up or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I can bring in. I have my lunch. I have the house in that pool that you were supposed to print. Do not call her 
because you're going to look silly if you do because mm -hmm. not going to show up anywhere. Right? <laughs> yes. And so I said that's bad advice, and it's not it's not my philosophy. So I'm going to go. So I got there, and they were there. Right? <laughs> and I said, and I'll tell you something. If I pull up, and that guy's truck is there, I'm going to be really mm -hmm. because I'm telling you. You call him and cancel the appointment, he's going to show up just wait. Yes, but <laughs> I'm telling you, they do this. Wow. And it's not killing women's culture. And they said, I'm going to do this cooking anymore. But it happens, right? I mean, you got to weed them out. So, so they listened to House of Us. She talked to him that night and then and then gave us his email address so we could docu sign it so they could get it listed and they listed the House of Us. So they had two listings in two weeks. One was like six or seven hundred thousand, and the other was a million two. Oh, wow. And then a hundred doors. Doors. Two weeks. Wow. Like two hundred. Yeah. But but the second time that they went, I said some of the hundred on the list are going to be people you went to last week, mm -hmm. but go again anyway. Mm -hmm. And so he went, met right through about no one answered, and he was about to leave the fire. He did leave the fire on the door and was going back to the corner. She came out. She was wait, wait. She said, my son was cleaning the house, we had come to be coming, and he threw the fly away. I wanted to talk to you last week. <laughs> Tell me about this. And that's how they broke the appointment. She chased them down. Right. Mm -hmm. So we got that house listed. Well, then I got that. So I'm going to avoid the foreclosure. But that's not what we went in. I went in to tell her what he needed to do, three things he needed to do. But he was in financial trouble. He was about to lose his business on the car repair stuff. She said, we just need to sell. So we got to sell it again. That's right. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Is that your question? No. Okay. Uh, Ahaz, you can just call her up and come Ahaz. So the <laughs> listing appointment is to um, get the listing agreement signed, obviously. Create a great impression, build a seller's confidence in you as their agent of choice. Again, that's, as I said, that's phase two for us. Phase one is getting the appointment, getting them to, to like us well enough to give us the appointment. Phase two is to really get into a relationship with them because you're there. I want to know all the wonderful things you're going to do. Share the price recommendation, the initial list price for their property, and the reasons why you suggest that. And then set the expectations on how you market the home and work with the sellers. Um, how the listing presentation meets seller needs and wants. That should take about 10 minutes, I think, for us to talk about that. Their needs come first. That's what I said. It's always about their transition. It's always about their transition and how you can how you can facilitate their transition for them with as stress-free and, and painless as possible. So this talks to the psychology behind it is to have them visualize their dream scenario um, for selling their home. And then that's how you discover what the transition is. People are these days sometimes a little more matter of fact about that. They know more. They're probably like your patients. They're probably better educated because they see all those horrible commercials on TV about prescription drugs and all the side effects that are going to kill them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So they they or they don't pay attention to that and they walk in and tell them you know tell their doctors what they want their doctors to do mm -hmm. and the doctors have to educate them about understand that but here's what here's a better procedure. So right. That's what they do. Okay. A knowledgeable and caring and best agent for these clients. They will appreciate my expertise and preparation and choose to that's an affirmation. Uh, okay. Opportunities <laughs> update like at every style. stage of your relationship. Right. Huh? Oh, I said I like your style. Oh. <laughs> uh, update at every stage and your relationship uh, and the transaction. Those are opportunities. That's mm -hmm. in command. Uh, and I wish I could tell you more about that, but I made the uh, decision not to learn command because there's someone on our team that does it. <laughs> she does the job. And I, I, that's the highest that she's in my time. So, and she does a great job of it. So the listing walkthrough, uh, I do, I, I found six of these, one, two, three, four, five, six, there's eight of them. This, I don't know if you've ever seen this, but when you put a listing in the MLS, there's boxes you check it, mm -hmm. about if there's heating, if there's air conditioning, if there's window air conditioning, if there's, Public sewer or if they're subject to floor safe. So, so when you're going through and you're listing them, this is what you're looking through when you do the walkthrough. Primarily, you went there with the price in mind. Mm -hmm. That was what data you pulled out of the MLS. Mm -hmm. You're there to look at the special features and to get to know them better and, and to find out if there's upgrades and motivations that you didn't know about that would add value 
or the, the garage ceiling is falling in and we have a problem, right? Mm -hmm. But when you come back, you get the leasing agreement signed and you come back, this is what you actually put in the MLS. And it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So when you're in the MLS and you're looking at it, and also the chair, you can see. You can like one table. So it's not in the chair as far as it looks, but uh, uh, Jimmy, let me know. <laughs> it's not as far as it looks, but when I mean, you're in, but here's what I'm going to tell you is uh, it's that's the only thing I was going to ever have to do. Let's do the listing. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm always thinking you're even help. I'll send that if you did. Well, like, you know, she didn't. She never helped. But it'll give you an idea of what the MLS is asking for when you when you put all of the details in and put them on the list of all of them. And so I think. I think they might have. Um, not. No, you're right. Okay, sorry. But it's front and back. It's front and back. Right in there. So, so here's what I'm going to tell you when you go and grab the opens. Um, and we, my team laughs about it all the time because all the time the reps come in and they're like, "Are you guys going to grab the opens today? Are you going to grab the opens?" And they look at each other and then they look at me and then they look at the person that I want to go. <laughs> we can't go on over opens. So I'm like, wait, wait, wait. That's not what Michelle said. Michelle said it's not a money making activity. That's what right. I said. Mm -hmm. It's not a money making activity. In the end, it will make you money if you don't have someplace better to be right that moment. If you don't have, if you never talk to 20 people that day, and you don't have two appointments for that week, that's the highest and best use of your time. Get back on the phones, get back on the text, get back on the email, and make two of your appointments for that week. If you've done that, Go and grow for opens. Stop at open houses on the weekend because you need to know every brand of clients that there is. Mm -hmm. You need to know what kind of flooring that is. And the best way to learn is to see it and look at the flyer that the agent has prepared for you. If they have one there, sometimes now they're just texting them so that you know the difference between a bamboo floor and a laminate floor and a wood print vinyl floor and vinyl plank, and so that you know those things, and the only way you're going to learn is to be in those houses, and then when you bring that flyer back, confirm it against something else or confirm it with other agents, because it may not be true. Agents might not know what a man before is, and they just put that in because it looks good. So, so that's the purpose of the listing walkthrough, is to see what kind of appliances that they have, mm -hmm. and know if you walk into the kitchen, and it's a Burgundy stove and it's a $26,000 range, right? You yeah. don't need to know that stuff um, because that's just not a stove, right? And if there's a teppanyaki grill on the counter and it's a stove pot, mm -hmm. that's important stuff to know. So those are the things that you learn from open houses and they will eventually be money making activities to you because when you walk in the door and recognize it, the seller is going to be so impressed that you know what that is, right? Or that they're double pane windows. So, so. So don't be like my team. You go, know, <laughs> like, you can go. If you have three appointments with us, we can go. Be my guest. And the beauty of it, first and foremost, the beauty of that is you will get to know other realtors. Mm -hmm. Other realtors are not the competition. They are not our enemy. They are there to partner with us and facilitate a transaction. And if you have a buyer that presents an offer to my team, and I look down at that and go, oh, that's Pamela, right? We're going to have a much smoother transaction than if I don't know you or you've been rude to me on some other transaction. <laughs> or in the 14 years that I served on the grievance committee, I saw you be there four times. Um, <laughs> you know, you're going to have a much smoother transaction when you know, like, and respect the agent on the other side. And the more agents you shake hands with and hand them your business card, and they get to know you, the easier your life is going to be. <laughs> it's going to be much, much easier. And you'll know who's in integrity, and you know who's flexible, and you know, you know, it just is a more seamless transaction. So go to all those you can if you have three appointments for the week. 
and get to know the agents. Okay, let's see walk through. Have it, thank you note, always, always, always have it, thank you note. I will tell you something. Let's see, I really kind of covered that. So uh, the uh, when we call, we also call, I have a couple agents on my team that spend a lot of time calling um, the Monta family because we have buyers that are looking for Monta family. And we call a lot of people who own Monta family see if they have any interest in selling and if they want a current rental survey for the area, that sort of thing. Anytime we talk to somebody, whether it results in an appointment or not, they go in our database. They go in our database as a follow up. But the first follow up they give us a thank you note. Hi, this is Michelle. I talked to you this morning about your 10 units in Long Beach. I appreciate your time on the phone. If you change your mind and want to a survey, let me know. Here's my card. Anybody you talk to, we follow up with a thank you note. Always. And then, and then there's a thank you note after we meet with them, even if we didn't get the listing, right? I look forward to the next time we meet so we can plan, you know, getting a listing sign and selling your house. That comes from the assumption that they're going to interview two other agents, but they're going to call you back. So it's like, Thank you for the time today and allowing me to come into your home. That's a very personal space that we're invading, right? And um, I don't answer my door when people knock on my door. I mean, Denise on the other used to come there once a month and knock on my door. And I'd wait out of the window, but I wouldn't answer the door. <laughs> and uh, she's an agent, in fact. So, so uh, I just don't. I didn't invite you here, and I'm busy, and I'm on the phone. Or, you know, I'm, I'm changing the grandbaby's diaper, and this is not a good time I go. Answer the door. Commercial is a little easier because that's kind of a business to business call. And you're usually not catching somebody who just brought three kids home from school and two of them started homework and they're cooking dinner and the baby is bad, right? That's just an invasion of their privacy. So so that's a delicate issue with that, right? To, to approach a residential homeowner. So anytime that you're allowed to be anywhere in conversation with them or in their home, always send them a thank you know, immediately, right? Okay. A house to achievement. Has your thinking changed, Jenny, today? The put of Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, what do you feel differently about? I'll let you just decide that on your own. How will behaviors be different going forward? What actions will you take and what tools, models, and systems will you use? The daily success system. Um, that's for conversions and contacts out of handwritten notes. So so everybody asks me all the time, how many calls should I make in a day? You, you might call us until you talk to 20 people. I mean, typically we start our day with 100, we're going to make 100 calls. If I make 100 calls and I haven't talked to 20 people, then I'm going to keep trying to call until I talk to 20 people. And, and when I talk to 20 people, um, how many, uh, um, 10 conversations, 10 contacts added. So that's your goal for the day is to write 10 handwritten notes, right? Add 10 contacts to command. If you read the MREA real estate book, um, there's a gentleman named Tony Diana that goes to his husband. Tony DeSalvo. Tony DeSalvo was a Boulder, Colorado agent. Met Diana Picosco, who they both were in the mid century 21, but they met in Boulder, Colorado. They got married, combined families. Diane, uh, is the one that created the uh, mega agent, um, mega agent productivity system, the Max Coaching Mega Agent Productivity System. So she created Max, she wrote all those programs, she created all of them. So she and Tony eventually ended up moving to Austin because she was corporate with Kelly Williams. Diana is very creative, she's a high D, she's a high I. She's a kind of personality. She's, she's a blonde Michelle Brown. So um, <laughs> her husband is is uh, was an accountant, sold real estate, was very analytical. And so as they're building their database, and it's before command that they were looking at how many pearls they get and how much fast business they get and pearls. At the point that he had 1,100 people in his database, and back then it was 33 touches a year. At the point that he had 1,100 people in his database, that was the first year that he made a million dollars. So the goal for everybody after that was to have 1,100 people in the command, right? Being able to convert some of those. So if you're building your command and you want to get to it, I have 
3,500 people in Japan, but 1,500 of those people, I don't know who they are. Or where I met them for, I don't have, I have an email or don't have a phone that needs to be cleaned up. But all I need is 1,100 because, you know, I have 3,500 and I don't make more than a million dollars a year. So if you can do it, 1,100, yay. So, uh, but this, this success system is like that first box where you put the check mark that you did it, but you had eight out of 10 conversations. The goal is to have 10 conversations a day. My team, their goal is to have 20 a day. Right. And then how many of those did you add to command, right? To your database. Um, and we try to add 20 a day. But this is this is a good place to start because if your goal is too big, well, yes, ma'am. So I'm just curious when your goal is to have 20 conversations and you've gone through the entire list and you've not done, you've not been able to contact, do you recall some of the ones that? You were able to touch base earlier. Now in the day of smartphones, where they can see who that we're careful not to strand like that. Uh, we're, we find other ways, like like when when I first started taking gold and doing the coaching, I had fast coaches, you know, with the kid, uh, and that was big. That was a big thing. And text did account, you know, to me. If I text somebody and they reply, that's a conversation. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so much of a gold and doesn't want to truck. You know, and if I can communicate with them by just say, I'd rather do that too. Um, except there's times of talking stuff that you gotta get your point. So right. everybody has a different personality. So texting on my team counts, right? Okay. So so then we look at other ways, you know, other ways to get people in your phone. Just go through everybody in your phone. We do that on every holiday. We use uh reach. I think it's called reach. It's an app, you load your phone, oh, yes. you can put a text message in there and it goes to everybody in your phone. So I don't have to sit on an airplane on the PRC on my way home. It takes two thousand people having to do which is all those, right? So, and the pen are opening that up again. Um, I think it's called two page. All right. I can tell you that's a great. They, in command, they have one called Trulia. Well, it's really it's the same thing. Well, and I think they automatically find us. So yeah. really yeah. like it really does. I don't you make sure that your conversations are real estate? Not all in the some way? No, okay. So you can be contented with 20 conversations where even eight of them involve real estate stuff. Yes. And, and that's your whole thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, a lot of those are past clients. And I really am calling just to see how their life is going. And, you know, one of them lives in Northport, uh, up on the fire camps. Her husband's a firefighter. And she, they live in Northport. And I saw two rental properties over right here that she inherited from her parents. So I'll never probably have a real estate transaction with her again. But last year, she referred me to her neighbors mm -hmm. on those streets because she grew up in those houses. And so she refers me to business, right? But I'm just calling to say, you know, how's your granddaughter and how's Sierra and how's your daughter and how's the farm and how's the dogs and how's your mom in there, right? Um, and I really do care. I really want to know because you could be friends. You know, you know, there's people that I'm in high school with that I'm not as close to as people that I spent four days a week with for the last three months because I know everything almost about their life. So we get to be friends and, and just to nurture and keep those friendships because you never know where your next piece of business is coming from. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are we done? So do not call us. We Don't know. move it. We know. We're every yeah. <laughs> oh, another affirmation. I engage every conversation in the spirit of contribution of people are happy to be in relationships with me. Most are. I have two ex-husbands that don't really want to say to you. Role model, role play. You guys don't want to do that, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Unless you really do. Yeah. Very good. Prepare your conversion. Pre prepare your conversation list. Um, we do that electronically, right? The, that's the people that you're going to call that day. I'm assuming that's what they mean by this. That's what we yes. do in the morning. And Gabriella is. God bless her. You know, she'll pull on the notice of default for me. Mm -hmm. Run us through Revo Gateway. Come back with phone numbers or email addresses. Or what did you say? Revo Revo R E V O Gateway. 
Rebo Gateway is a platform. I don't know what it costs us. I think about 80 or 90 or 100 dollars a month. Rebo Gateway, you can go in and you can search for all the divorces in your neighborhood. It'll give you their names and their addresses and phone numbers or email. Where do you start? Rebo Gateway. Repo? Rebo. 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 R E B O. And it's just specific. Rebo Gateway. Rebo Gateway. Divorce? Or what is all? It gives you divorces. It gives you deaths from the family. It oh. gives you, um, I don't know what else, but but there is also a way you can import. If she goes into, if she goes into the real estate records and pulls all the notices of default in zip codes, she can import that list to Rebo Gateway and, and they will do a search internally and, and send an exported list back that has emails or phone numbers. We, let me tell you what not to do. Don't use land voice. Don't use Cole, C O L E, Realty Resource. We used Cole for about four years and, and we just canceled our subscription with them because only, we're only getting phone numbers and email addresses for like 20% of the people that we send in there. And probably a third of those are not good numbers anymore. My son uses it in Nashville and gets great results, but people in Nashville don't move around as often and change phone numbers as often as people in LA do. Um, so, so we've used Land Voice, we've used Co Realty Resources. Co Realty Resources is very affordable. I think ours was like $150 a month, and it's for the entire state of California. But the results weren't good. They were good when we first started. We put in, we put in 500 people's names and addresses, and we would then come back with 200 to 250, either phone numbers or email addresses, and two thirds of those were good, right? But then it just it went down on us. So we don't see. We don't use land voice, and there are some people that use Radix, and I don't know what kind of results they're getting. I think Bottle Lockdown. We subscribe to a platform that's an automatic dialer. Um, don't go there yet until until you've got all of this down because they will identify your number as a not a spam a spam risk. Yeah, real quick. So uh, you've got to kind of know how to manipulate that system. And but the back, what do they call it? The back of the house. So the mojo, mojo is a dialer, and we can put all those three phone numbers in there, and it'll fill down three numbers at a time. Yeah. So if, if someone picks up on their voicemail, it'll drop a message. Hi, this is Michelle. I'm sorry, missed your call. I was I'm with the real estate professionals, and I'll try you back later and just leave that professional message with them. In the meantime, it keeps dialing the numbers. And when somebody does answer, I have an option to say, Hi, it's Michelle Brown. Um, I manage properties in your neighborhood, whatever our message is. Or uh, we don't, don't call the notices of default to say, I saw that you're facing foreclosure. I want to tell you what your options are because I don't know who I'm talking to, right? And uh, you may, you may be talking to someone's father who doesn't know that her house is in foreclosure. So we don't we don't do that. We're, we're a little more confidential about that. But they have Mojo has a back system that will search expires. It'll give you the current you have to pay extra for those, but every day it'll send you the expires. You don't need that. You can find that in the MLS. You mm -hmm. know so because uh, sometimes the phone numbers are not anyway. So we we're, lately we've been using we we Used Rebo Gateway years ago, and then I kind of forgot about it. It kind of fell off of our radar. When we started using it again, we're getting good results. Mm -hmm. from that. So, um, okay, our conversation list comes on, uh, in, in Excel because we pulled it out of. We don't have we don't have a paper list like that. Late generation conversations. Oh, that's real play. That's role playing here. And we could talk about that. We could do more role playing just with your questions, unless you guys really want to. Role that, play. That's like actually what we're supposed to do after class, basically, is like, yeah, do yeah. our lead gen activities. Okay. Right. Daily success. Yeah, it, it, right it, it's that, yeah. Okay. Are we done? That's it. Yep. Prepare for the next session. Yeah, wow, well, that was record time. Because <laughs> uh, you're with the text, not talks fast and digresses a lot. Okay, so there you go. Uh, I'm surprised with the, so you would check off if you have 10 conversations or you had eight out of 10, and you would check the box if you had six out of 10, you fill in those blanks. The 10-5-1 social media engagement, 
That's email, texting, and phone calls. That's 10 likes, five comments, oh, and one share. Thank you. I didn't know that. Um, enrichments, appointments, agreements, and closing. So those are command statements. Enrichments are people that are not quite in your sphere of influence, but you have met them. That, that, I guess you guys know all that from your previous classes, right? Well, mm -hmm. tell us again. Yeah. yeah. Enrichments is a new word for me because it, it's, uh, it comes from realtors in other states that are getting house token and stuff. And it means you've enriched the relationship, but they're not like really in your sphere of influence yet, right? Mm -hmm. But you've enriched the relationship with them. They've asked you to call back or you can put them in command and put them on getting your newsletter. You've enriched the relationship with them is what that means. To me, enrichments mean, you know, that we struck oil or gold or something, but um, I guess you do it if you're building a relationship with somebody. And then the appointments, if you check that box, then where do you put in how many appointments you got? You know, there's no, there should be a little line. Oh, yeah. Actually, yeah, below we get a conversation seat and then oh, okay. we can make notes. Okay. okay. Yeah, we can put in more information. Awesome. Now. This is awesome. I have a child at night in my three years. Um, I, I was teaching it for a while on Zoom. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where I met Cecily, who's actually on our team now. And, um, but I haven't taught it, and this is all new because a lot of it comes out of command, which right. is, is a brilliant system. Don't get frustrated with it. Mm -hmm. Dive in and learn it because it does such a good job. Such a good job. And there's all kinds of ways on there to interact with Facebook and other social media platforms that don't cost you anything. You're already paying for a command right. so to utilize it. There's so many people. I'll tell you another thing to avoid. There's so many people selling CRMs right now. Uh, contact management databases, mm -hmm. and they don't tell you that. They call you and say, can you use more leads in your business, right? And you only pay us 25% referral fee. Mm -hmm. Well, you're gonna pay a 25% referral fee if another agent sends you business anyway. And and I will pay that all day long. We pay, the agents in this office, we pay a 30% referral fee. Agents from other offices and other agencies, we pay 25% referral. I will pay that all day long because referral is almost golden. I mean, it's like somebody said, this is who you need to go to, right? And especially if it's another agent that has researched it and said, there's almost 100% contract uh, in those conversations that you have with the referral. And I'm happy to pay that because I pay close to that in advertising and photography and all that stuff anyway. So, you know, it just, it's just money in the bank. So, um, and did I start on that page? <laughs> oh, what not to do? These people are calling us to use more leads, and it's only going to cost you 25% referral fee, and they are sponsored by a broker. So that gets paid out of escrow once you have your commission, so you don't have to pay for it up front. And they go, sure, yeah, I'll do that. Oh, they're not. We work with brokers all over the world and pay 25% referral fees. And then they say, okay, well, it's $250 to sign up. Mm -hmm. And you're signing up, you get a contact management database that you can use. So here's how that works. You don't need another contact management database. You have one. Mm -hmm. We have command, which is better than anything they have, if they even actually have one. Mm -hmm. When they get the lead, they're going to put it into that contact management database into that CRM that you just paid $250 for. So they're, they're monitoring what you're doing with the lead because you're going in. Mm -hmm. You'd have to transfer it to command so that they wouldn't have control over it over anymore. Some of those databases are owned by other real estate companies. So what they're really doing is selling you a project manager database. If the leads, I can't use this word, but it's runs with you. The, road, the leads are not good uh, most of the time. That the, they'll put a lead in there, like you know, somebody in Alita has a duplex they want to sell, or somebody in North Carolina Beach has a condo they want to sell, and here's their name, and here's their phone number, and they might then they said they'd like an appointment for Thursday. Mm -hmm. And you call that number, it's no good, or nobody answers, or they've never heard of you, they have no intentions of selling a brand. We, we made a mistake of trying one one time, and, um, and it, was, it was terrible. And I asked my $250 back, because they never heard of me, they didn't know what it was. So mm -hmm. Yeah, so being, being we're leery of that. There's a million ways. There's a lot of them out there. There are. Mm -hmm. And there's a million ways you can do this yourself. Yeah. And that's, you know, when we started, we had no money. We had to do them, you know. And the thing is, don't be a secret agent. Have your business card with you all the time. 
And I can't tell you how much business my hairdresser has given me, and I've never asked her to refer me people. But in the chair, um, getting back to my natural color, <laughs> uh, we spent a lot of time talking about my day and what I did. So she knows full well what I do. And to be personal, I just sold her mother a condo in her down the beach. So, and she bought her house in Taurus, and I've, I've had three or four deals in just the last six months with her. But if they don't know, that's my friend Jackie. My friend Jackie worked at Skaggs Albertsons, if you remember the stores, <laughs> the grocery stores here are called Skaggs Albertsons, and then I went to Albertsons and now they're all like smart class. But Jackie worked at the Albertsons by my house back in the day before all my family abandoned me and moved back home. Or <laughs> um, they, uh, the family was around. My son, well, my youngest son lived in a detached garage. He lived in the apartment above the garage. And my husband was not retired, and he was here all the time. We have a twin brother who farm in Louisiana that he grew up on, part of 60 acres that he grew up on. So he's, he goes back and forth there. He's retired. But my other son lived in the apartment above our garage. My other son lived inside in the guest bedroom with his girlfriend, <laughs> recovering from a broken hip. That's the musician that moved to Nashville, and he had a ski accident and broke his finger, actually. And, and then my daughter, uh, was had moved here for a while and she and her husband had a home in San Pedro. So, and we're all football fans, you know, in Texas, that's religion. Yeah, it's Friday night, you go to my series, and it's Saturday, college, and it's Sunday. Too. So, Jackie, Jackie was like 6'2. Jackie worked at the Albertsons that was near my house. I mean, I was there three or four times a week in those days. We did a lot of open houses, people don't want something anymore. So, I'd go there and buy stuff for the open houses. I uh, so it was a water. Hi, Jackie, how are you doing? This is great, right? And uh, Jackie was like awesome. Mm -hmm. Like, he even got very protective of the family. And he knew football Sunday that I would go ahead and buy all the stuff for the football game. Uh, my husband went in there one night with one of my best friends who was here from Oregon, a pretty blonde. And Jackie said, There's a shower. <laughs> and just like, she's in the car, and be on the phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, what I didn't know, one day I'm in there. And I had my name measured. And I was buying stuff, and there's Jackie. Jackie drives a bus for the city of Los Angeles, and he worked there. And he has two boys who are uh, wrestling champions in high school, one was going to college. And he said, You're a realtor? And I'm like, Four years, mm -hmm. three times a week, you and I talk. Okay? <laughs> and he goes, I never knew you were a realtor. My mom and I own retirement, but we own. Uh, um, Private, private living homes for senior citizens. So they buy homes and they have, you know, like four old people, one in each bedroom, and then someone there during the day will sell a ticket cooking and that sort of thing. We own four and we just bought two. Mm -hmm. And the other two are for sale because my mom was got bigger ones. And I'm like, you didn't call me? So I didn't know. <laughs> so I had a stack of business cards. Uh, but that's not Jackie's fault, right? I was yeah. like, I just assume everybody knows because I'm so adorable and I'm such a big <laughs> Not everybody knows, so don't be a secret agent. Just be, like, that's the truth. You like, you probably know, like, are your sphere of influence and everything around you, even though you tell them once, you know, they forget. Yeah, you can tell them a lot of times and they can still forget. Like, you still have to like be present in front of them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, guys, this was fun. Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then if I don't get back to you in 15 minutes, I'm going to tell Carlos or Simon. I'm giving you a second chance because uh, sometimes I'm busy, but I will get back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And don't turn down to your business for something that you don't know where you're going to go. You'll we'll find a solution. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your weekend. Mm -hmm. You too. Yes, you too. Thank you, man. You're welcome. Where's Gold? Where's Gold? Let's go. Let's go. I'm like story time for you. Oh, for sure. But I like that. <laughs> like, 
Is it personal? Well, I want to. I want to see if he has like a packet or something that I can send somebody. Yeah, what they what they're getting after that. <laughs> yeah, it's soft. Very good. I didn't know I could this. Oh, yeah. Did she stop recording? Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I noticed again. What a dinner tomorrow. Uh, 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 I have some showings tomorrow. Um, there, well, my niece, my, no, um, my niece is leasing her property. The gold by thirty two hundred. I'm gonna go by uh, the other two. Rachel mm -hmm. and Christy. I'm having an open house on Saturday. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm just doing it on Sunday. On Sunday, and then Rachel is doing it tomorrow and yes. Sunday. Exactly. Yeah, we got to go to a bunch of like open houses or go get all the houses for sale in the area. Oh, bar dippers, and it was like tight. And I was extra large, she's like, she's like larger than that large. So, oh, like, oh, and I got like, tear up. She would be up. This is an extra large, but I didn't really want a bar. Oh, yeah, it was like pretty big. Um, mid, like, something in every other drive. Yeah, so I think like, it was extra large, but big. Oh, I know I saw someone doing that. I forget what they need. Oh, they 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 took that ring and then they put an elastic yeah. around it. And that's what I'm like, what? I thought of that. I don't know, but I was like, well, they didn't wash it. I mean, I don't know why the washers would try it. Yeah, I don't know. 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 Well, they wear pants all the time. Like, all the because every year that, like, every time he goes to either family reunion yeah. or um, mm -hmm. Maggie, yeah, he's always looking to see what yeah. they want. I liked the one he was wearing the other day with a big bowl on it. Yeah. I said I got to look for my other one. Yeah, you found it. I'm not blaming it. I'm not blaming it on you, but I put it somewhere. Work, work one day. My name's Will Walker. Are you sure? Are you sure? When you're at home, you're No. You should do it. You don't have to just start talking. No, you're not. Just not. That everyone else in the hospital all of a sudden start. Oh, but why real why Sunday? <laughs> because my wife's so annoyed. That's a question. Or he's all over the what about the what the girl? Did you say that because we're uh a new business? He said, Oh, oh my god, he said. He said. He said. 
Call everyone on your phone and tell them you're expanding the family business and those things you know anyone that wants to buy so Find similar to our invest. Email address and it's very job. Oh, so what did you just say? A white mouth. So we're individual and then last week I did. Okay. So we have to know we have a team command. So we will have access to the team command. Oh, I mean, like in terms of um training. Um because supposedly, like you know how we pay our $70 a month or whatever. Oh, no, we only pay once. You only pay once. We only pay once. We only pay once. We only pay my husband is going through the process and stuff about getting into write the exam soon. But the only reason why he's doing it is so he can attend open houses with and of course be the contracts and stuff. But so yeah, I don't want him to necessarily have to pay for no we just pay one okay. I don't think I'll pay the Oh, there is a fifty dollar charge or something. That do you get a job? Yeah, but I've already got it. I've already got it. It's not like they add it into the monthly billing. So this month, they'll probably get into insurance. I've got it. Yeah, that'll be the one there. But I can't talk. That's it. One time, it should be. Oh, I think so. Maybe there was something else. Oh, I didn't notice that there was a one time fee in the, in the breakdown statement. I saw a one time, a one time yearly fee that they seemed to. I don't know. I can't remember what it was. So I looked at it and I'm like, oh, okay, I'll see. I don't think it's clear. I'll see what it is. Uh, it's not in the data I wanted to follow up call and say, hey, you know, I just wanted to touch base. Sounds like you're with me. I get some more specifics from you about what area, blah, 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 so that I can send you your neighborhood watch. And yeah, well, you know, that's something that you because you can't follow up. That's the part people let go of. I didn't mean that you just don't have time to follow up. No, you know what? So you need to follow up. Um, you can't do the follow up. It's time. It's very time. Because yeah. he's on call for two days a week. When he's on call for two days, he can't do it. And with, we have to put him out of touch. Let's get what I have to do. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm not sure when they're going to be close. <laughs> and so, so it's time to ask about how to speak. So, well, there's one from the other one. It looks great. It looks great. But that's my whole point. She should not, that's great, but she should not be sent to homes. She should be on a trip and go with all the ones that I want to see. I told her that conversation about to be. I said, that I said, I sent it to you. I said, uh, the only thing was, was that she wanted to see one of five there. It's the next one that had four. Is that a deal breaker? 
That's the question you want to ask. Well, she said she really needs five. I know, but the question you want to pose uh -huh. the fact that she was looking at it, it's like, oh, yeah. but so why are you looking at four yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, is it? But it might have an ADU or it might mm -hmm. have, right? You want to ask her, is that, oh, so is that a deal breaker for you? Like, if, would you take four? All the busy pods that and, and the other thing too though, it doesn't hurt to get the the, the house that they've fallen in love with mm -hmm. because then it's a sense of conversation and then you can actually go into the system and look to see what else is in that neighborhood. Like so is it the view? Is it that yeah. kitchen? Is it that and she was saying that it had a cool freaking view with that this like said it's up in the Hollywood Hills. And uh, she said, you know, you, you see all of LA. She said, yeah, has she driven those roads? Um, oh my just God. Just there. Yeah, I was telling her. I was oh, telling her. So, where in Hollywood Hills is it? Chia is, or is it oh, yeah. Henry Is it like Mount Olivia? Is it back there? So, so I was going to leave by the Hollywood Hills. She is you know that area so well. I mean, we fall in here and someone says that they want to go into LA. I don't know that area in LA, so I live in LA. You know this area. You moved here just before the pandemic, so then you're not all going to do anything. Where'd you move here from, Christine? From Canada. Okay. How do you like it so far? Oh my God, I don't know why. We, got there. <laughs> uh, we still have a twist there, but it's happily red. And I just, everyone wanted us to go back at Christmas. We found every excuse in the book. No one's going to do it. It went so wide for Christmas. Oh, right. And we're just like, no, it's cold. We're coming there. <laughs> Okay, I'm not even happy or not to be in there. You're fine. We need that. So, when we were working the major, and then we had the experience of the major, we had one age, we had a random time, we had a random time, and I thought, oh, okay, well, it's the first time I've been there. Oh, the tower the We don't have the first office in the I have I think you can download that from the get better at taking advantage of printing stuff because if you don't print during the month, then you lose it. And I'm like, ah. Oh. So it's only to lose like that in the last month, maybe even the what is the program that Brenda talked about on? Seven years since Bill? No, no. Uh, I don't know. It's something, something that helps you. Oh, I mean, she was a oh, it's a great program. And I said, that's 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 that. That. Spiders is there. Okay. Only if I depends on. Um, I was just wondering what it does. I was trying to get the information from her. She said, well, it it. I think it's there's chat.open.com. Yeah, so that was the, the computer version. And then there's an app that he has us download one time called Chat and GBT. And yeah. that's what we were trying to kind of Wait, it. Wait, he had a he had a download of chat and GBT. Uh, okay. And this was a function of that. That one where you have, oh, uh, yeah. oh, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't think he ever has done. He mentioned it, but I, yeah. but you know, I 
I don't know. I can't remember whether that was one that Gads actually paid for it because I remember not actually doing it. Actually, I, 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 that I, 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 not free, don't do it. But yeah, free, don't do it. If you pay for it, don't exactly. Do it. Exactly. That's the part of yeah. But I used to check in between the door. I was, I was, my son called me up and asked me this esoteric second question. <laughs> And I was, I, I told him, I said, well, it should be this, it should be that, it should be that. And I was trying to look it up. And then I brought it, no matter where I went, it wasn't giving me the answer. It wasn't giving me the information that I wanted. So I, I just asked, Jack, I said, so, uh, give me a paragraph in relationship between interview and And it did. I got the information I was looking for. I was saying, well, I was six times and there and I was going to go to the entropy and to have less entropy than Managing that system, managing that system means that this key there should not have to increase it. I said, I think the next guy increased. And I kept trying to find out and validate that. And I said, I just And that's chat Yeah. Yeah. I don't have that one. I don't know if that one is. No, you just go online. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to download it. Well, they were saying that the kids in our case are using that to actually write their homework. Yeah. And I've heard something, somebody told me that I don't know how to do the security that I go to the vegetative bar. I heard chat. Yes, the <laughs> Yeah. Right. That's right. Well, the bar is never needed. As I said, it's hard to see how they do to say straight their way to the bar. That's probably the way they don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 That's, That's crazy. crazy. Yeah. So, what's your specialty? For I would say called a company hospitals, kind of like a parents' That's the thing about the top one because you're coming in, or you've got patients coming in, then they're, they've got some kind of an issue, and that's when they're the most operating. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't see folks that are just there just check it out. Right. Well, that's not true. That's the truth. The, the way it is, there's a lot of ladies that don't. Have any prenatal care and it was kind of drop in the hospitals once in a while to make sure the babies are right. Get a fair handle. Because they have a certain tweet or something that they don't understand the companies or that and maybe spotty more. Well, I mean, you know, you get those ones, but it's like a logical site that I've like, got in. She moved here from Texas. Uh, she, she had to care in Texas, but when she got here, she was decided she didn't need it anymore. So, right. so every couple of weeks, she goes to my hospital or company or Florence, Florida, all of her. Some other hospital and says, you know, check my baby out. Right. Uh, <laughs> you know, we're not. Um, and I, I always used to wonder. I mean, I remember one time when I got sick of the I thought it was a matter of bad. 